because I was a man. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the return of a brand new edition of YouTube Take. Right, this will go uh, up. Your host. will definitely go up. This one, 99% chance will go up. Um, I think we all got some explaining to do. We won't make it too long, but here's what happened. So, three weeks ago, we recorded a show. And I couldn't upload it because my computer was being very slow. Like, it wouldn't let me open the application. It wouldn't let me edit the application. I didn't know what was going on. My computer was going very slow. It wouldn't let me edit it or anything. So, unfortunately, the show just never got uploaded. Then I took my computer to the Apple store, and they told me that the reason my computer was slow was because my hard drive had failed completely and that I needed a new one. So, I'm like, all right, fine. So, I gave them my computer to fix so for a week, I didn't have a laptop. So two weeks ago, <laughs> we tried recording like when I was on Skype on my iPad or Skype on my phone, but my signal was just terrible. Because for those who don't know, I go to college, I run on a college internet, and that is the best when you have an Ethernet cable plugged into your computer. There is no Ethernet port for an iPhone or an iPad. So I tried to get on Skype on the guest Wi-Fi, but it just, it sounded terrible. We tried, it, it just, it wasn't going to work. Then last week, I get this computer back, <laughs> but my hard drive is completely erased. So, and I didn't have a backup of the data. I didn't, like, yeah, that, that was a big mistake on my part. So I didn't have a backup of the data. So I lost the record for YouTube take, unfortunately. And I thought I had an extra copy at home, but I do not. So, unfortunately, it looks like the record is gone. I wrote down what I remembered from it. Um, if anybody's willing to help us out and write some things that – send us some things that I forgot. For Markeem, I have in four years, Luck and RG3 will be the two best QBs in the NFL. I'll never pick the Lions, Texas Tech, or TCU for the rest of my life. <laughs> Week two will be the only time I pick the Jets, the Colts will win the division. I will never pick Virginia Tech to win if Logan Thomas is the starting quarterback. And Phil has Alabama's not losing this year. I will never pick Notre Dame for the rest of my life. And the Chiefs will not make the playoffs, which I'm not looking too good right now, Phil. I feel like a complete idiot. We'll get to that. We will get to that. And then the only one on my record that I could remember is FSU will not beat UM twice. And that's something that I added last week. So yeah. we're clearly – oh, and Marvin Lewis. Marvin Lewis will never win a playoff game. I'm sticking to yeah, that Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Though. I'm writing that one. Um, so, yeah, if anyone can comment – and send us stuff that they remember. We would appreciate it. But, yeah, I've, it's gone. There's nothing I can do. So last week we recorded a show, a great show, we all thought. We were all motivated and energized to get back to YouTube Take. We recorded a very long show. I didn't have the, my Skype recorder. And for whatever reason, my computer wouldn't let me install it. It was really weird. So my computer wouldn't let me install it. So for the first two hours of the show, Phil – if you can take over now. What? What happened last week? Oh, last week. So uh, I, rec I had to record. And uh, for the one rant, this just shows you that we're not supposed to be doing it for the last three weeks. Um, my internet goes out, and I have the best out of the three. I think we can agree. Yeah. I don't know. Internet? I don't, yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's, you know, I pay for it. That's, or I'll pay. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, not a lot of fans, but. His, his internet went out. Oh, it, it went out, of course. Couldn't get it to come back on, so I had to go on my phone. And his internet well, okay. never and your internet never goes out. Ever. Not until not till like five AM or four AM or something like that. So he went on his phone so, and I then tried to install the Skype recorder and I did successfully. And I recorded the last hour of the show. And Phil recorded the first two hours. And Marquis went to bed. And then me and Phil Spent three to four hours, I think. Like I, I know I didn't. Yeah. We didn't. We didn't finish till like five in the morning. We were trying to figure out how we could edit the show together. So we we have a Dropbox, and I told Phil, let's put the two files in the Dropbox, and one of us get both of them, and and edit the show together. But Phil, your recording, if you can explain. 
Uh, it corrupted. Uh, I don't know why, but I guess because the internet went out. It corrupted. Um, stupid. Skype recorder. That's what happens when you get something for free. You get what you pay for. Anyways, um, or don't pay for it. I hope, hope y'all didn't catch me crunching on the on the show. I was eating salt. No, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't want anything. I, just, I heard you before the show. Anyways, uh, dang, damn it, Marquine. Your file, your file got corrupted, and we couldn't it got corrupted, upload it. And it didn't only get corrupted, it got completely deleted. I don't even know what happened. Uh, it was right there. I could literally click on it 5,000 times. It wasn't going to work, and it said zero kilobytes, which is, I tried to tell my uh, big rat who was trying to be positive, but I was like, dude, this is not a file. I'm not an idiot. I took computer classes. I was like, it's not going to work. And we tried. I gave. I let him try, uh, and it didn't work. But And I don't blame him for trying. But anyways, so yeah. That's and then for, and then, then for whatever reason, so then me and Phil said, okay, fine, we're just not going to upload the first two hours. We're just going to upload the last hour, which still had our NFL picks for the weekend. Um, and then my file, which had been working fine, like I had played it multiple times and like already begun editing it. For whatever reason, my file started to not work. And I had no idea why. And I put it in the Dropbox, and I said, Phil, can you fix it? And Phil couldn't either. Like, it just wasn't meant to be. So it's not. And, and there were things on that show that no one will ever know, and they're only coming up. It, it comes up again. It's all I'm saying. Yeah, honestly. I mean, everything we said was pretty cool, but it will probably be said again. But yeah, look, the yeah. point is, yeah, we haven't done yeah, a yo, show. If, if y'all like my Logan Thomas rants, the shit I had last week, man. Hey, <laughs> don't, A plus. Don't 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 remind them of what they can't hear. Yeah, what they can't hear. <laughs> Look, what I told everyone is that Marquim hates Logan Thomas, just like last year when Marquim gave us a weekly Lane Kiffin rant. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets his dander up when talking about Logan Thomas and goes off again. But anyways, um, yeah. So we haven't recorded a show in a month. There have now been two shows that we've recorded that have never seen the light of day, and that sucks. This, well, sucks. this show is going up. We apologize for everyone. I know a lot of people have been like messaging me like, oh, why can't you upload the files onto Mediafire? Like, you know, like we tried everything. Like we really did. It's just been a big stall. But the show's back. Look, we're excited. We're not good stuff. We're not there. idiots, okay, people. We, we got a Harvard we got a Harvard grad over there or Brown, uh, sorry. And them, and them trolls on ask. Segway, yeah. Phil. Go ahead. Oh yes, S dot FM. I'm not. Slash. By the way, by the way, I'm not a Harvard grad. I do not go to Harvard, <laughs> and I'm not a grad student. Hey, I'll try. I'll try to plug you up, okay? I'm a Brown undergrad. There's a difference. Sorry. And and a Brown grad means you graduated, don't doesn't it? Ain't, ain't Brown Ivy League, son? Yes, yeah, son. That's like Harvard I'm cousin. Smart I'm, ass motherfucker. We don't talk Harvard. about these things. We don't talk about these things on air. This is this is too, would, this is um, In fact, I'm, I'm considering sorry, I'm, I'm considering stopping the show and re-recording now. Are you oh, serious right now? No, 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 I'm being I'm being a troll. Phil, hey, to make you feel better, I I go to freaking I went to freaking Coastal Carolina. But anyways, to, to those who do not know, I I do that a lot. Sometimes we'll do an intro, especially with Chase and Markeem. We did the NBA shows. I do an intro and Chase and Markeem would say something I didn't like, and I would just stop and redo the intro. <laughs> Well, that's that's Chase. I mean, Chase probably started off with, "Well, up, what's up, guys?" <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> well, okay. Well, tell them about the Ask FM. Oh, about, was that your Chase impersonation? No, I, that's not my Chase. Yo, that, I gotta be actually. Absolutely. That was Spitternet. I apologize, Chase, right now. I, oh wow, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna minimize our. <laughs> I'm not gonna minimize our content, but I'm gonna minimize our tangents because I do have to be up early. But Phil, all right, well, anyway. Ask FM, go. All right, sorry for the the shout out to so and so. You blocked. Anyways. Uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube take, uh, ask.fm slash, I don't know, is that a forward slash? YouTube take, um, ask your questions. Don't ask them anonymously. I see this little button right here. It says ask anonymous. Blah, 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 blah. Don't do that. Don't, don't click that. Click, unclick. Uh, we want to well, know your well, name. If you do that, put your name in. Yeah, you can do that, but put your name in the question itself. That's fine. We don't, you don't have to have an actual ask, uh, account. Uh, we want you to ask questions. It's, it is literally, like I said, YouTube take. The link will be in the description. So uh, make sure you. Uh, we're gonna click try on to that. An, we're gonna try to answer the questions on this show. Yes, on this, the the very next show. So uh, or and so forth. Uh, how many we ask depends on how many good ones we get. And if you ask a stupid question, Marquine, what happens? 
I, I will call you the fuck out. That's what happens. Because yes. yes, remember, we're only going to answer questions that have a name attached. So don't bother being anonymous and leave a stupid question. We're just going to ignore it. We're just going to delete it. What? But if you ask a question and attach your name and your question is dumb, we are going to read it on air and we're going to call you out. So don't ask them questions. And if y'all think I'm a dick, then yeah, I'm a dick. Yeah, whatever. Don't ask nothing stupid. You know if it's stupid or not. You don't need anyone to... And, <laughs> and if you ask... And we're not talking about this. This is not kind of stupid. What counts as stupid is are the Giants going to be Super Bowl champions? That's a stupid question. Um, maybe I don't know. I don't even know if I would talk about that one. But anyways, a stup- a non-stupid question or a non-question I'm not going to answer anyway. I'm going to delete it as soon as I see it. I'm not even going to ask Markeem or Bigger. I might tell him. But uh, is uh, a question. Oh, are you married? Are you single? Are you alone? Are you a loser? We're gonna, we're, we'll ignore those. We'll ignore those. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. Ask us questions. We'll so go them. ahead and troll. Go ahead and troll. It's not gonna work. And also, can... watch our YouTube take video of the week. We were just laughing about it before we went on air, so I'm going to put it in the description box. It's the famous South Park clip, Wheel of Fortune, People Who Annoy You. <laughs> it's great. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. It's great. Watch it if you haven't seen it before. We just were laughing about it before the air, and we think you all should enjoy it. So, yeah. Now let's get started. Let's talk about some football. Let's do this for the 50,000th time. All right. <laughs> of course, we start every show talking about our teams over the past weekend. Um, Phil, I'll let you go first because me and Mark Keem's teams were pretty topical this past weekend. Uh, but, Phil, start us off. Patriots, Cle- uh, South Carolina, what'd you like and all that? Okay, and we're just talking about this weekend, right? The, the, this, past this past weekend. Stuff. This past okay. weekend, yeah. All right. Uh, was, this weekend was Steelers-Patriots. So, of course, um, once again, because if you guys don't know already, if you don't know, you are not. You just obviously don't, not a fan of the show. Uh, I don't. Sometimes I miss games. I did tape it. Um, I had to go back and watch some of it, but I missed, I got to see the first half. I liked what I saw. Um, I got to see, yeah, the whole first half, missed the second half at church. So, uh, priorities. Um, but anyways, not the ramble. Uh, I mean, we did, we played great. Um, I made a comment that I'm, I know big rat's going to want to comment on, but I said simply, and it was just, I was being a troll to be honest, but I said on Twitter, I said, Oh, I guess Brady's still on the decline. <laughs> you and, didn't, uh, Bill. You I did. didn't. I, w- I did. You didn't see it, apparently. Oh, but uh, but I did say, to my defense, I said in that same, the very first one, I said, uh, this doesn't go out to some of you because some wait, of you have logical wait, behindings. T- time out, time out. I need to interrupt you for a second because I just realized that our Brady conversations, both last week and from three yeah, weeks yeah. ago, never saw the light of day. <laughs> Um, oh, so they have no idea what that's yeah. supposed to. Yes. Uh, yeah. So very quickly, oh, very quickly, I will explain. I'm saying that Brady is on the decline because his numbers this year haven't been that good. But that doesn't mean – here's the problem. When you say someone's on the decline, the perception is that automatically means you think they're bad. That's like when you say that something's overrated, it means it's bad. No. Saying Brady's on the decline does not mean he's a bad quarterback. It just means he's not as good as he was in his prime, and that is fucking factual. He is clearly at his best in his career. He is not playing at that level right now. He's not playing horribly, but he's not playing as good as he's done before. Therefore, he is on a decline. It's a slight decline, but it is a decline nonetheless. I don't even know how, how slight is it really. Look at that completion percentage. And Just I, saying, I, I, it's kind of alarming. He was, I, I think it went up now, but um, yeah, probably, yeah, it, we'll definitely, it definitely went up now. But at one point a few weeks ago, he, his completion percentage was ranked 28th in the NFL. And right now it is, I'm actually looking it up right now. Um, oh, I looked up completions, not percentage. Right now it's not 28th. It's No, it's actually exactly still 28th. <laughs> My bad. Even after his great wow. game last week. But, yeah, he's ranked 28th in completion percentage, like 19th in quarterback rating, and he's missing throws. I'm sorry, and I don't mean to offend Phil, and I don't mean to offend Brady. Um, I watch hey, a lot of Patriots what, what, about his, what about his QBR? Look that up for me. I'll look it up right now. His QBR, yeah, go ahead. You're on it. I'm looking at His QBR in the last game was 97.7. So his QBR for the season is 17th. Which is not very Tom brady like. But it's not Brady, right? Right. So, and like I want to, I want to very quickly point out to those because everyone's automatically going to blame. Oh, it, it was the new receivers; they're dropping too many balls. And now, last week, that everyone was healthy, he looked great. Um, very quickly, I would just like to point out that that is an incorrect statement. Brady's percentage percentage of Brady's passes that are dropped are only ten percent. 
Peyton Manning's are 8.75%, and Peyton has the best accuracy in the NFL. So only 10% of his attempted passes are dropped. The drop is an excuse. If you watch the game tape, if you watch the game tape, you will see that Tom Brady is very clearly missing some throws. The, the, the best thing to quickly look at and tell is the QBR because that uh, takes account of everything. And he's 17th right now, so. Well, he's, and he's, and again, yeah. he's not a terrible quarterback by any stretch. But he's, yeah, but uh, we, we're being so rude to Phil. Go ahead. I just, I just wanted to, again, I didn't want to cut him off, but, like, no, the people, fine. they don't. I keep forgetting because last time we did this show, we also did this routine. And now I'm just remembering now that no one's heard our conversations about this topic. But, all right, c- continue with Brady. Or the right, Patriots, well, whatever. Well I'll, well, I'll say my comments since you guys got to say yours. Um, my comments on and my stance on the decline thing is I'm fine with what Big Red just said for the most part. Uh, and what Markeem is saying, you know, the logical people. But this, we know, let's go back to the Saints game because that's what we're, we haven't talked about. But – or y'all haven't heard, but that's when people said, as soon as he throws an interception, it's, it's the same perspective that we go back to. Um, and we, I don't think this aired either. I don't remember um, the quarterback thing where the quarterbacks get so much love or either they get too much hate or whatever. Um, they either get criticized too much or they don't get criticized enough. Well, my thing is that I said in that was, you know, people also, you know, jump the gun and people are so reactionary, which is something that I get, you know, everybody falls in a trap too. So I get it. But people were so reactionary that he throws the pick and everyone set, chose that time to say he's on the decline. And then he made him look like complete idiots just for that game. Just talking about that game. Um, and that's what was hilarious. It made my, the greatest night of ever. ever. Uh, it was not, however, for big rat, <laughs> but, um, and I can't remember if we had a show since then, but anyways, um, Oh, what, say? Oh, what about uh, the game, Phil? What about the sorry. game? I'm sorry. I'm going back to the game if I can get to Brady. You got, y'all said you're declined. All right. Well, um, as far as what I say when Brady's on the decline, I don't think Brady is on the decline it's in a sense. I agree with what they're saying. Is he at the level that he was? No. Um, and I I just don't like the word decline. I'm a fan, I'm a fan of his. Of course, I'm not going to use that word. But I agree with what they're saying. Their, their press makes sense. Now, as far as the drops, I do want to comment on that real quick. Um I don't know for sure because I can't look it up, but granted, yes, Peyton Manning has eight something percent and Brady has ten, but that's not really what you can compare. You got to compare Brady ten percent to what has he had in the past. That's what you got to compare it to. Um, and I'm not, and I'm still not picking it, picking it out because he has had bad throws, and I'm not going to be one of the fans, which I've seen a lot, that point out his hand because he clearly said his hand was fine. So I'm not going, you know, no, you know, and then in that game his hand was messed up. You know, he was doing all right, so. I'm not even worried about that, but uh, I don't. I think his hand it was obviously hurt, but temporary. But anyways, so we go. To, so that's enough. Bar none, I don't think Brady's on the decline. I just don't think Brady's on that, that level. That's how I'm gonna say it. He's not okay. his, at his level that he could be. Uh, so we go back to the game. He had one of his best games of his career. Uh, yeah. Just that. I mean, this season clearly probably his best game nah, yeah, yeah, um, uh, of his career. I don't know. He he's just had so many good games. I don't know where they would rank, but. First of all, for those of you that don't know, and I don't, I'm probably going to butcher these stats, but uh, the Patriots have never, or the Steelers have never lost like they lost uh, Sunday. So, and I grant it, are the Steelers the Steelers they they were? Of course. Yeah, f- 55 points is the most points they've ever given up. Yeah, yeah 55 points, and they are, are also are the Patriots are not Patriots are the Steelers uh, a credible win right now? I wouldn't even go that far. Um, obviously, it's one of those ones you got to win if you want to be in the playoffs. Um, I mean, Steelers have kind of been in the mix because of their division. Uh, we'll get to that later. But as far as the game, as far as the game, I mean, because they're two and well, they're two and six now, so they're pretty much out of it now. But they were coming back at, at a sense. But uh, so if they had won that game, it might have put them in there. But anyways, Brady played great. Receivers played great. Um, it's uh, oh and uh. Oh, we had something that uh, me and Markeem always talk about. Oh, oh, what was it, Markeem? A running game. Oh, Big Bill. <laughs> we have a running game. Brady he only had to throw 33 times in a game. That's a freaking awesome. Um, four touchdowns for him. Steven really had 26 carries. Thank you. That's who should get the ball. Bill, I don't care if he fumbles. He's our best running back. Suck it up. Um, and I'm not someone that usually complains, but that's just something I don't like. Uh, first of all, I want to say this is what I thought would happen when Gronk started getting back. Gronk, let me just read the stats. Nine catches, 143 yards, and a touchdown. Haters can suck it. But anyways, no, that's just my fanboy coming out. Um, 
pretty good. Danny Almadola did not get hurt, and he caught four passes. That's a miracle in itself. Um, I don't know where Julian Edelman is, but when you have uh, Dobson step up, who needs him? Uh, sorry, love you, Edelman, Edelmania. But I won't, ra- I won't ramble anymore. Just want to say that I think the Patriots did very well in that game. I think that uh, they proved when healthy, regardless of if it's against the Steelers, and it is at home, um, and they don't really have any kind of defense. So, <laughs> oh, my gosh, the Steelers don't have a defense. That's like – like Troy Palomalu was awful. Awful. He was terrible. Yeah. And that's all they have. So, and Ryan Clark is. That was that may have been Clark. the worst. Like I saw the tape, I saw the highlights in the tape, like the defensive tape. Like they people, a lot of people comp, like did compilations of, compilations of like you know how bad the Steelers defense played and all that. That was borderline oh, pathetic. Man. Like they, they legitimately could not cover. I think, I think um, what you call it? I think uh, it was Dave Damashek who said it best on the NFL Network. I get that you can't cover all of the Patriots weapons, but you can't even cover one of them. <laughs> like, like it was, you talk about decline. Ryan Clark is on the decline. He was never fundamentally that great of a secondary player. He just always was crazy athletic, and that's starting to go. So you know, you know what happened to Ryan Clark? And I'm not gonna be. I'm gonna sound like a fanboy. He called him my boy, and the boy embarrassed him, and he hasn't been good ever since. Just saying. He called out Brady in the, uh, in the Steelers game a couple years ago. That same game, he got embarrassed. And he ain't been the same ever since. I'm just saying. But anyways. Oh, um, get off Tom Brady. I know. Man. I don't know who's worse. Me with Andrew Luck or you with Tom Brady. That's my boy, son. That is my boy. And I'm just saying, everybody has their boys. So you got to, you know, get in your boy time, I guess. That sounded Boy, horrible. that sounded gay. <laughs> that sounded so horrible. Anyways, um, but yeah, Patriots are doing good. One little comment I want to say. Uh, what's I going to say? Uh, I want to make a comment because and this is probably going to blow up, but whatever. Um, for all you haters, yes, I'm calling you haters of Namdi Awesome Oh, God. If you think the Patriots would be stupid to sign him, you're a fool. That's all I'm going to say. You, uh, you uh, uh, we're, no, we're, we're, but, we're not, uh, not going to pursue this. No, we're not going to uh, pursue uh, this. No, I, 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 Let Mark King comment. I, I, Let Mark King comment. Not stupid if you sign him for the league minimum. Yeah, that's not stupid. You see what you get from him. But if you pay him any more than that, then that is stupid. You, I agree. Like, that is retarded. I agree. But, hey, we'll see. All I don't right. know if he's gone through waivers yet. I don't know all that stuff. So. Well, anyways, now we... Oh, the Gamecocks. Gamecocks. Right. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. We're going... No, we're going NFL, or are we going to do both? No, just here, do Gamecocks very quickly. Oh, well, there's not much because I didn't get to see that game either. Any, or that I think mean, you'll see that game. All right, then we're, we won. We we won, so move on. <laughs> Solid. Uh, Markeem, uh, VTech, and then Eagles. Pretty normal. Right, I want to talk about the Eagles first because this would be a lot shorter. Okay. Um, we were incredible. I know. It was, I know. I know it was the Raiders before y'all. Like, well, they're not very good. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Let me just say that. Let me just say that going into that game. A, the Raiders are good at home, and B, they were a top 10 defense. Yeah, yeah, look it up. Yeah, we were incredible. Like, the defense Nick, stepped Nick the fuck up. Foles. They played well. I'm going to get to Nick Foles. <laughs> we were good on special teams. No mistakes. That's been, like, the theme. We made some fucking mistake on special teams. That didn't happen. Um, everything was just rolling. The Eagles looked unstoppable. That was the first time we looked unstoppable since T.O. was playing with us and we went to the Super Bowl. It was incredible. Like, it, it damn near moved me to tears. And Nick Foles, man. I know everyone was ready to kill this dude after the, after the Cowboys game, but can we just stop now? Can we stop trying to say that, yeah, he's inconsistent, but so is Michael Vick. He, he's, at, at this point in time, he's just fucking better. Like, I'm sorry. Can we just acknowledge this now? Both of them are inconsistent. But I'd rather have the inconsistent guy that can actually complete to who he's throwing to. I'm just saying. I, I, I'm just saying. But, yeah, we looked incredible. Incredible. I so I want to say I hope this is a sign of things to come. I still don't think we're a playoff team. I still don't think that we're a very good team. I still think that we're, like, six six wins at the most, to be honest with you. I, I, don't, I don't expect much. And I hope we suck so we can get a good draft pick and then build a planet. But, um. It's like two wins away. Let me, but let me say that. In yeah, the two, yeah, I know, I know Phil. I know. In the in the two years, in the two years that we've done this show, Markeem, a supposed Eagles fan, has buried them at all costs every week, 
and deservedly. But this is this is good to hear to hear these praise. Uh, quick note: I did not know this. I just looked at it. Nick Foles, perfect rating. Yeah, Nick. one one fifty eight point three. Not a perfect QBR, but still. And uh, okay. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was gonna say. Now we move on to them Hokies. I ain't about to be nice right now. All right. <laughs> Logan yeah. Thomas. And, uh, no, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to blame everybody. They quit. They they fucking quit. And the reason why they quit is because there was a point in time where yeah they were moving the ball and that's nice and that's all well and good. But two interceptions in the red zone, Logan Thomas. It's not one big one. One big one. We 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 had these niggas. We was on their throat. We was on their throat. Pat them, and then the defense was like, "I don't even know why we're doing this. We're gonna lose this game. Like, like let, let's just let's just chill for a minute. Let, let's just chill. Like, cause everybody start like uh, Bud Foster. He took out all his starters for for an entire sequence. Took out all his starters in the middle of the third quarter inexplicably. <laughs> and I don't blame him, cause he figured, oh, well, Logan will fuck it up. So let me take all these guys out so they won't get hurt, and let's save them for the fourth quarter. And then by the time fourth quarter rolls around. Logan fucks the game up, and we got a chance to win, and ain't even got to worry about this overtime. You go overtime in Boston so ever since Matt Ryan was there. This is one place you do not win on the road in overtime. And it shows, it fucking shows, because they played like shit during each, during during the first overtime period. They were terrible. Nothing happened right. This team is terrible with Logan Thomas at quarterback. He is a walking piece of inefficiency. Whenever he is under center, I feel like we're going to lose. I feel like it's a guarantee. Like, a win, a win is a bonus. When he's under center, a win is a bonus. Look at this man's seasonal QBR. His raw QBR looks like a fucking, like, 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 bas- like, they're like fucking basketball scores. They're like fucking college basketball numbers. Like, look at this shit. This motherfucker had an adjustable QBR last week, a 36. Week before, a 26. Week before, a 64, which ain't that bad. And he had 88, which is the best game of the season. 74, which was the second best game. And then just shit the rest of the way. I ain't gonna go through it. Just shit. Shit. He's bad. He is bad. Everyone, and, and I, st- I still see him on big boards, on mock drafts going in the second day. Dog. If Graham Harrell didn't get drafted, this motherfucker don't deserve to get drafted. Because the, the object of the game, here's a good thing for you. Here's, here's a good thing to think about. In the history of the NFL, can any of y'all name me a running quarterback that's ever won the, uh, the Super Bowl? Steve Young? Aaron Rodgers? I, I, I said a running quarterback. I mean, he ran. Like run, run first? Yeah, but, run I'm, first? but I'm saying they're pocket passers. Yeah, run, uh, run for it. I'm, t- I'm saying them niggas are pocket passers that can move. I'm talking about running court. I'm talking about Michael Vick or Donovan I mean, McNabb. I mean, like- well, Donovan McNabb was pretty pretty close. Yeah, he was a pocket passer. But, but, but he, he didn't win, though. My point is, can you name you one? Um, no, but I, I do think... Aaron Rodgers is not a running quarterback. Steve no. Young is not a running quarterback. No, I can't, but I do think, I do think that... Um, which I'm gonna call. I do think Cam Newton might break that, but yeah. Continue. And, 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 and Cam, Cam Newton and, 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 and Colin Kaepernick maybe, but I'm just saying the point is that the shit is rare. And but, but the difference between those dudes and 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 Cam Newton, Colin Kaepernick, RG3, motherfuckers like that, they can don't be disrespectful. The they can deliver the ball from point A to point B. It's that Russell simple. Wilson. Oh, Russ, well, him too. I'm just examples, Phil. I, I know, I know. I'm just messing with you. Like, they can deliver the ball from point A to point B. Logan Thomas, Logan Thomas' career, career, career fucking p- percentage. His career fucking pass percentage is goddamn, what is it? I can't find it right now. But fi- No, 50, 58.5. Terrible. And that's the college level. Yeah, the, the college, no, my bad, my bad. Hold on, I'm looking at the wrong thing. 56.5. Yeah. So it's terrible. It's just awful. Like, fuck this guy. Fuck everything about him. Fuck him. Fuck his family. Fuck anybody he knows. Wow. I hate every, I hate anyone that was involved with putting Logan Thomas in a Virginia Tech uniform, whether it was his mom decided to go there or maybe like, you know, maybe his baby mama or some shit like that. Anyone that wanted him to be a hokey, they all should die. It's that simple. Fuck this guy. Oh, wow. Fuck this guy. <laughs> Like, wow. I, I'm, you know, you know, you know, you know what? I, I have heartedly mean that. Like, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and say I don't mean that, because I kinda do. Fuck this dude. Like y'all don't understand what we've been going through. Like you you don't know how it feels to hear guys like Jesse Palmer and guys like uh you know, Kirk Herbstreet. Guys like Jay Glazer, who's an NFL analyst, 
I mean, he's an NFL guy. I mean, guys like Mel Kuyper, guys like Ty McShay, and you know, and, and Brett Musburger. Brett Musburger said in the past three years, the Virginia Tech defense is the best he's ever seen, and that's the voice of college football. If y'all don't know, if y'all know who that is, that's the dude. Who? Who's that? Who did you say? Brett, Brett Musburger. Musburger. Like, oh, that's the guy. Yeah, the guy that's, yeah, that yeah, hit on Washington. Yeah, he, he's he's a, he's always he's always late game on ABC. That's the voice of college football. He's the. Him and, it's him and Kirk, ain't it? Yeah. It, well, most of, yeah. most of the time it's Kirk. Not all the time, though. No, but. Like he's not, all, not, not, not every, uh, it's, it's all, shoot, but it's always him though. Yeah. And he, he's the Jim Ross of college football. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's, he's the Al Michaels. What are you saying? Yeah, I say, I, I call him the Al Michaels of, of NCAA. Oh yeah, but he's, Al Michaels doesn't have nearly the amount of respect that Brett, Brett Musburger and Jim Ross. Like, like, like I'm saying like, like the voice of college right. football is Musburger. Let him, let him okay, finish his point. Let him finish his point. Sorry, 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 sorry. Like, nobody thinks Al Michaels is the voice of the. I mean, you can make an argument, but it's he's not, better. Than, he's the best. He's one of the best analysts of me. I, I, I agree. I agree. Calm sorry, sorry, sorry. No, you got a guy like that though that has seen. He's been doing this shit for years. He was around for Osborne. He was around for Bowden. He was around for Paterno. And he said out of his mouth that this Virginia Tech defense is better than the one that led them to the national championship game. Why are we six wow. and three? With two conference balls, wow. we got a defense wow. like that. I mean, I don't agree with, him, but but I see why he would say that. That's what he said. He said he felt like this defense is better. He said he said no. He said no one can score on them when they're motivated. That's what he said. He said the offense is just so inept that they're held they held out to dry. He was on Mike and Mike pretty much just going in on Logan Thomas without saying his name. Fuck this guy. I'm, I'm, as long as he is the quarterback, I will never pick them again. Let's move on. Wow. Damn, what if the Eagles dropped him? I, just, I might be might done. Well I, I might be done. Like, honestly, I, I, I think there's nothing that will ever make me say I'm not an Eagle fan anymore. That might be it. And also, because we talked about this last week a little bit, what's up with the injury thing with Logan Thomas? Oh, yeah. You know those two games I told you where he was pretty sensational? Had an 88.9 QBR and a 74.8 QBR. It said he had bruised ribs in that game. He must be healthy now. He must be healthy. <laughs> like, like he, he must be 100 fucking percent. Like, I'll go in a little bit more come draft time on what's actually wrong with this dude. But for right now, all y'all need to know, he is inept at everything that involves being a quarterback. His form even looks bad. Like, dog, he trained, he trained with the guy that helped Aaron Murray improve leaps and bounds this season. Help Johnny Pantel become a better passer. He's not, he's got shit to work on. Andrew Buck is the quarterback of this game because this Cam Newton, Ben Roethlisberger. The list goes on and on. This dude trains with this guy and puts up these numbers. Fuck him. Fuck him. It's a chemical imbalance. He is foot. He he has football retardation. Is that something? Wow. <laughs> like like, oh, wow. like, like it's, it's a chemical imbalance in his head. Like he he he. It's like he can't learn football. Like fuck fuck him. Okay. Hold on. First, that was an amazing rant for one that deserves a round of applause. And, and second off, Phil, what the fuck are you doing? What? You're making a shitload of noise. Oh, I'm pulling a big round. I'm sorry. I was trying to snack on something. Never mind. Like, Jesus, it sounds like you're like eating out a, a Doritos bag, but like putting it super close <laughs> to the microphone. Yeah, it's not like he was eating a Doritos bag, right dude. But, but yeah, kid, go ahead, cause I'm all I'm right. curious to know how you feel about the Canes, man. Cause all right, all right. I, uh, like, I, I I will say this before he goes. Like watching that game, I felt like really sad. I was like, cause the kid's there. I was like, he's probably devastated. I really felt bad, like for real. It wasn't like it wasn't fun to watch that, cause I was like, kid's there. He was so excited about this. I was like, I really felt bad. I'm not gonna lie. Well, the that's, dog- why, that's why that's why I straight up tweeted you. Like, are you all right right now? Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll see what we can say. Phil, put that fucking shit away. Phil! What's up, Mr. Typer? Shut it's, up. No, no, that's making far more noise than my typing yeah, ever yeah. did. I can't even hear Markeem. Like, seriously. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like, Sorry, that's my bad. Loud as fuck. Um, well, very quickly, I'll just address the Dolphins. Not the incognito thing. I'll do that later. Just the game. Um, I said on this show last week, I gave one of the most passionate Dolphin rants I've ever given. And I said that the Dolphins have killed me. And I said, I've given up. They suck. This is bullshit. And I told both of these guys on air, I 100% guarantee we'll beat the Bengals. 100% confident. 
like with no doubt in my mind, we'll beat the Bengals, and then we'll probably beat the Buccaneers. We'll probably beat the Chargers. Maybe go like on a five and four, six and four type streak, and then lose out four to five games, win the last two, and finish the season seven and nine or eight and eight, like we always goddamn do, because it's the fucking Dolphins, and it doesn't matter who's the quarterback, it doesn't matter who's the coach. They're trapped in this sports like purgatory forever. So, <laughs> out and off. <laughs> What? Yo, that was incredible. I've never heard that. Good job, kid. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. So I went off last week and I said, you both watch. They're going to beat the Bengals. They're going to, but it's just not going to matter. It's not going to mean anything. It's not going to be indicative of how good this team actually is. So I went to the Bengals game too, and the first three quarters was amazing. Um, Then the Dolphins legitimately had me convinced that we were going to blow it again. I know I said that I had no conf- I had no doubt that we would lose. But in the fourth quarter and in overtime, I was just like, oh, my God. Here we go again. Good Lord. The the team that is a history for destroying leads. And it's been, again, forever. People don't remember this. In 2009, when the Saints won the Super Bowl and they started the season like 14-0 or 15-0 or 13-0 or whatever, the Dolphins were beating them 23-3 at halftime. And they lost by over two scores. Over two scores. Like, that's how pathetic this team has always been. This team is the best, the absolute best, at being the biggest cock tease of hope. At, that's why I always say we're worse than the Jaguars, we're worse than the Browns, we're worse than the Bills. Because I would love to go 4-12, and 5-11 every year and know that the team sucks and just be happy that they beat someone. That's not what it is with the Dolphins. They give you the hope that they have a talented roster, that this year's going to be different, and then they make you think that they can beat the best teams in football, and then they let it go. Like they did with the Patriots, like they I thought they were gonna do with the Bengals, but we won. Cameron Wake's a monster. I've been saying Cameron that Wake. Cameron Wake's a stud, and that was an amazing. Like I game. call him Cameron Sack. I call but him Cameron Sack. One thing I did realize is I think Ryan Tannehill really is our quarterback. Um, that fourth quarter drive I think is not getting enough praise. What he did to get us into overtime was impressive as all hell, and he made some incredible throws. That, 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 hold on, kid. Like that's that's one guy. That I can totally admit I was 100% wrong about. Because he, at Texas Tech, let me Texas Tech, Texas A&M, he looked like, you know, like for real, he, he, he looked feeble. Like he looked weak minded and feeble. Like he looked like the moment was always too big for him. And I, props to that dude, man, because he's becoming one of the most clutch quarterbacks in the NFL. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's, it's a, the exact opposite of what a Dolphins quarterback has been the past 10 years. So if only he can get offensive line. If only he can get an offensive line. And uh, I really think that game told me that Joe, we're not going to win a Super Bowl with Joe Philbin. Um, not that I think he's a terrible coach, because I don't, actually. I think people are kind of overreacting. But I already know that we can't win a Super Bowl with him. He just has too I, many flaws as a head coach. I, I, I don't think he's a head coach. Yeah, fair enough. Nope. Fair enough. Fair enough. I would agree. I would agree. He's better than some others. He is. He is. But, I mean, it's like my whole thing with Marvin Lewis. And Marvin Lewis is really the biggest extreme in this because Marvin Lewis is a really good coach. But, like, if you, win in the playoffs, right? if you know that your coach is never going to win you the Super Bowl, like, if you can already tell that he's just not going to be better than some of the best coaches in the NFL, why why bother keeping him around? Like, well, well, it, well, one thing I'll say about that is if you're, if you're constantly getting into the playoffs, how do you – judge by going like you're always in the playoffs you're always in the hunt but you just haven't got there i I, look i get that it's different in college but in the nfl what terrible coaches won a super bowl terrible coach yeah not happening like it's just too tough that's Mm, right that's true terrible guy terrible coach that's yeah but film is not terrible bad wait bad wait phillips wait phillips is terrible what bad what bad head coach bad uh, I'm, I'm, uh, you might me. be right. You might John, be right. It might like, not be one. John Harbaugh, especially recently. Especially John Har- recently. John Harbaugh, Tom Coughlin, um, Dungy, Mike, Mc- Mike McCarthy, Tony Dungy, Bill Belichick, Sean Payton, um, Ma- Mike Tom, Mike Tomlin. Like you know, it's just Bill Cowher, Belichick, uh, John Gruden. Those are all the coaches that have won in the past twelve years. Oh God, Josh is Josh is drooling listening to this. Because uh, his Bill Walsh argument, sorry. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, no bad coach wins a Super Bowl. And in my opinion, we don't have a great coach. So already, 
I don't bet anything wins the Super Bowl either, too, though. Just a quick point. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah. Bad, bad, bad quarterbacks have won the Super Bowl. Trent no, Dilfer, not bad. Not bad. But Trent Dilfer was garbage. He was, no. <laughs> he, no, he was garbage. Did you see them niggas that season? <laughs> like, he, didn't do, he did nothing. He did nothing but not turn the ball over. Like, well, that's not, yeah, that means you're not garbage. <laughs> that nigga's garbage. That nigga you're a game garbage. manager. That's called game manager. But no, he, was, he, he was bad, though. Like, he wasn't okay. good. Like, you I know, Phil, he's, he's the only starting, he's the only quarterback quarterback to win a Super Bowl and then get cut the next season. <laughs> Come, on. Come on. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, all right. That's what would happen to Tebow. Okay, never mind. <laughs> but, okay, so anyways, my point is that that, um, what should we call it? So, yeah, the Dolphins, they look good. Uh, Tannehill looks real good. The defense looks phenomenal, but I can already tell that Joe Philbin is not going to win a Super Bowl with us, so I think we should already move on, but that's just me. Um, the Miami Hurricanes. Um, for the... Uh, for those who do not know, I was in Tallahassee, Florida uh, this past weekend. I uh, flew down to Miami, my hometown, and I drove up with my family and a lot of friends to this game. My entire family went. A lot of my best friends went, and we all went to the game together. There were like 18 of us homies like in the UM section. Um, I was very excited. If you saw – I mean <laughs> if you saw the show last week. Last week when we did the show – um, as these guys can tell you, I did not pick the Canes to win. But my only thing, like I didn't talk trash. I have a lot of idiot, like I have a a lot of idiot um, FSU fan friends. A lot of them. I didn't talk any trash all week. The only trash I talked was the only thing I said was that the spread was ridiculous. That was the only thing I said. So my big pitch on the show last week was that, yo, we're going to lose, but it's going to be a lot closer than people think. And in the first half, we played near perfect. Near perfect. Jameis Winston had two interceptions. Has he had two interceptions in a game all season? Nope. nope. That was he, the first multi-interception game. Yeah. He had two interceptions both in the first half. And Stephen Morris, that first half, looked amazing. His first touchdown pass may have been the best throw he's ever thrown in his career. Like, he looked amazing. He was compl- he was accurate. He wasn't making bad decisions with the ball. The receivers were getting open. It was perfect. Perfect. I was so happy with it. We were, we were able to put some pressure on Jameis. We still, were, we still only sacked him once, and we still rarely broke the line of scrimmage. But we did ruffle him up a little bit to throw more interceptions. But it's not like – I mean, the FSU offensive line is just really, really good. I don't think we had enough power to <coughs> I overtake still, I still think they're a little overrated, but go ahead. I'm just saying, man, we could not get to him at all the whole game. We caused some pressure, but we couldn't reach him. Um, but anyways, and Jameis, so we played the way we did. The first half, at halftime, it was 21-14. Obviously, everyone in the UM section is very, very happy. We're all, this is exactly the type of game I thought we'd play, almost exactly how I thought it would go. And I thought, okay, just continue this in the second half. Maybe if Jimbo makes a mistake, we can pull it away late. Probably not going to happen, but, like, you know, keep it going. And in the third quarter, unfortunately... One of the worst third quarters UM has had in a while. Um, Jameis wasn't throwing picks anymore. Um, I think they got a two-touchdown lead on us. And Stephen Morris threw back-to-back interceptions. Uh, The first one, I mean, the first one I think was just a dumb decision by James Coley. It's like first and 10, and we're throwing legitimately an 80-yard post play. And Stephen underthrew the ball, but it was 80 yards. Like, you know, I think think it was being a little ambitious there. So I, I... I mean, it was bad, but it wasn't egregious. The second interception, I completely 100% blamed him. He said, hey, look, our tight end, our tight end is one of, is one of the best in, in, in college football. Um, but people don't know that. And he said, our tight end is fucking talented as hell. I'm going to throw up there. I'm going to throw the ball up there and give my tight end a chance to win that matchup and win one for the team. But if you saw the interception, it was just like, don't fucking – I don't care how much confidence you have in your tight end. Do not put the ball there. It's just – it's not going to work. It's not going to work at all. The chances of the chances of catching that are, are very, very, very slim. And I was not happy that he made that decision, especially since, like, you know, we shouldn't be making risks like that. Like, you know, we were already down by two touchdowns by that point, and he had already thrown an interception. We can't throw interceptions. We will not beat FSU, have no shot – Turning the ball over. Turning the ball over multiple times, you'll be lucky if it's even remotely close. And unfortunately, um, unfortunately, uh, what should we call it? Unfortunately, he threw it and we looked 
Uh, we did not look good, to say the least. I, I won't deny that. And then the FSU got a three-touchdown lead. But their three-touchdown lead was really only because Stephen Morris, who had been making touchdowns in the first half in the third quarter, was throwing interceptions. If those two interceptions aren't interceptions and he drives down and he scores, it's only a seven-point game. And then finally, so FSU's up by three touchdowns. They're up 35-14. to 14. And then at the very end of the third quarter, we drive into their red zone. It's 35-14, and it's fourth and one, fourth and two. We run it with Duke Johnson. Duke Johnson doesn't get it. And at that point, that's when I knew the game was over. I mean, I didn't think we'd win. But I still thought, hey, it's the third quarter. We score here. We're only down by 14. Make a stop. There's still a lot of time. It's not inconceivable. But Duke got stuffed. And so... He got he got stuffed for real, for and real. Then, and then, yes, it was reported that Duke broke his ankle and is out for the season. Oh, um, no. I didn't hear that. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So it was 35-14 without Duke Johnson. The entire fourth quarter... I was just like, man, we're this is bad, and like you know, we put up a fight. FSU drove down twice. They had field. you know, you know, a, a loss is cool, but losing that dude, that's yeah. you know. <laughs> uh, we'll talk, I'll talk about that. So FSU then drove drove down and kicked two field goals to make the score forty-one to fourteen. But like I told Markeem, if you actually watch the game, this game was far closer than that score said. I think that's fair to say. I don't know about far. It was closer. It was was closer. closer. It was close. It was not. It was far more competitive than Notre Dame Alabama. Then the the line motherfuckers are thing. I totally agree with that. Notre Dame Alabama had almost the same score, and this was a lot more competitive than that game was. All right. Well, and and, and also, they played them a lot better than someone like Clemson did that got blown out at Death Valley, one of the loudest crowds in the goddamn (laughs) South. I know Marky was going there. I want to say I am sorry for reacting to uh, the score when I didn't get to see the game. I apologize. That's, that's On big Twitter, no one cares. But anyways, but I will say I still do not fear that, especially now that I know Duke Johnson's gone, Clips, st- I still think, I'm sorry, is a better team than Miami. You're crazy. Okay, You're I, crazy. I'm going to explain You're crazy. I'm gonna explain that too. Hold on. I'm going to explain all that. So, yeah. Unfortunately, we ended up getting killed. We lost by 27. Well, we, we won't find out because they don't play each other, and it pisses me yeah. off. <laughs> I, want them, I want them to just eat them niggas because Miami does everything. That is the kryptonite of Clint. Do you understand that Clint, the Taj boy, would never even touch the ball if they played each other? He wouldn't even touch the ball. They can't here's stop the th- run. Markeem, Markeem, here's the thing, though. I'm not saying I'm comparing them. I can't compare it. They're not going to play each other, Okay. So I'm not saying that – you know better about matchups, so I can't say anything about matchups. I'm saying compare what Clemson I have with – all the stuff I have on Clemson and all the stuff I have on Miami, Clemson looks like a better team. Like, granted, when they play each other, that might be a different case. But I'm just saying. You, you, you smoke, you're smoking that ganja. Hope you're, not, you're smoking that, all right, that, that right, good well, stuff. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Well, let I, me, I, I, want, I want what you got over there, Phil. That's what I want. <laughs> all I'm saying is let Clemson – Play Wake Forest stuff, and then we'll, we'll talk. Oh, wait, they didn't. Oh, wait, they didn't. They, they grimmed them. They she, grimmed them. She, she, uh, you killed me with that. When you say shit like that, it's almost like you're new to college football. Do you know Wake Forest does that to everyone? Do you realize that? you realize them niggas won the ACC a couple years ago? He did, not, he did not know that. That's what they I do, did not man. You're right. Like and I'm, I'll admit when I'm wrong, but I'm just saying. All right, I, I can only go. I can only go by my eyes. Like, this is saying. all right. All right. All right. We'll move on from. Go this. ahead. Your turn. Go ahead. So, yeah, we unfortunately did in fact cover the spread and then some. Okay, I mean, not, my bad. Did we FSU beat the spread? And uh, I was pretty bummed. And then when Duke got, was, I found out Duke was out for the season. I was just like, Are you serious? Um, as far as our chances at beating FSU again, because we will play them again at the ACC championship game unless some crazy shit happens, I said on the record they will not beat us twice, but that was with a healthy Duke Johnson. But I will say that the next time we play them, it's not going to be in Dope Campbell, for one. Remember, all, everyone should also remember all the stuff that in that game happened on the road. It will not be in FSU's home stadium, which is a great stadium, by the way. It will not be the best in the country. It will not be in that stadium. It will not be in that stadium. And I legitimately believe Miami will play better than they did in that second half. Will we win? I honestly do not know. Hold on, hold on. It's played in the Georgia Dome, right? It's No, it's in Charlotte. 
No, Georgia Dome is SEC. It's the SEC title, yeah. I, um, look, I don't know what's going to happen. I need to see how the whole season plays out because my one prediction for the year is that FSU is not going undefeated. Like, I don't know who they're going to lose to, but I just personally think they're not going undefeated. Maybe they lose at Wake Forest this week. Maybe they lose to Alabama. Lord knows. But my whole thing is they're not going to go undefeated. So I need to play, let the whole season play out, let the Canes' whole season play out. Maybe if Steven starts playing better. But um, I'm just not as confident yep. as I once was that we'd beat them a second time because Duke Johnson is our best player. But I should also say that, yeah, Duke Johnson is our best player, but we have more depth. Crawford's amazing. I was going to say, he's not amazing, but he, he's, he's very Well, good. yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. We have more depth. We have more depth at that position than we would, like, if Stephen Morris went down, for example, or if Denzel Perryman went down. Like, you know, like, you know, we have more depth behind Duke than we do at those two positions. And Stephen Morris and Denzel Perryman are our other two best players. And so I think, yeah, it's bad. And obviously, Duke is obviously a huge motivational leader. Uh, I do think it's bad, but. Dallas Crawford is, is, in my opinion, pretty talented. I know one of my very good friends doesn't like him that much. I think we'll be fine. And it pays what, me. What? How do you not like that dude? He's so low to the ground. He's fast, explosive, I, has good vision. Can, who, I, who, who do you hang with, kid? What kind of <laughs> goddamn? Good Lord. <sighs> quiet, quiet, you. But, yeah, Dallas Crawford is one of the best backup running backs. He is the best backup running back. Who said that dumb shit? <laughs> All right, quiet. Um, but yeah, that's why it's not going to hurt us as much. Like, like, can you think of anyone else? Maybe, maybe he's not even healthy right now. But maybe uh, Keith Marshall. That's about it. Well, how many, be- how many backup running backs are given a chance like Dallas Crawford was? But, but even still, man, come on, what the fuck? Fair enough. Okay, okay, fine. Did, did, did you see him in the second half of that North Carolina yes, game? Yes, that's, that's incredible to come in just raw and be able to do that. But UNC's UNC's run defense is pretty bad. It, it, but, but who gives a shit? He came in with no warm. He had no idea he was going to get that many carries, and he came in and was able to do that. I like, I love Doss Crawford. Don't get me wrong. Your, your, your friend's a dumbass. I hope he knows that. <laughs> Good lord. Um. Anyways, Dallas Crawford. Is, uh, is very talented, and it pains me to say this, but even though Duke Johnson did have one run against FSU that was called back, that was bullshit because it would have been an 80-yard touchdown. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was bullshit. And it was the same drive. It was the same drive that Steven threw the first interception, I think. So, or, or, or it was a punt, I forget. But if you, if you didn't see the play, Duke Johnson ran backwards. He looked like he was going to get tackled, but he broke away from the tackles, went and then around. Was Went around like, the field and was gone. Yeah. Like, like, like when he did that, I was like, the kid, the kid might be right, man. This dude might be better than TJ Yeldon. Yeah. But I tell you, <laughs> like that, 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 that was for real. That like somebody has to find that play. That was incredible. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I hopped up my chair and I was like, this is amazing. Go Duke. <laughs> but unfortunately, the refs. Oh, ruled, by the way, the refs ruled that he was down um, when the guys tackled him, which wasn't the case. I mean, fuck, you can't do that if you're still down. But. Yeah, you know, Duke Johnson, but and it, but even though he my point is even though he did have that big play, it's not like he lit the world on fire against them. So he played well. He did play well. He played a lot better than he did against the Gators. But he wasn't he wasn't putting up like, you know, 200 plus yards on them. So, can Dallas Crawford reach like, you know, 75 to 80% of Duke's rushing productivity? I think he can. So that's why I don't. I think it's bad, but I don't think it's as crippling as some people are saying. Some people are saying now the season's done. There's no hope. I don't think it's that bad. We, Look, man. E- e- even if y'all lose out from here on out, I would call this a season a season a big success for y'all. Uh, like, like, like this is the blueprint. Y'all have found the blueprint. Y'all will be fine for years to come. I believe. I agree. I agree. Go um, um, being there, that coaching staff. Y'all will be fine. Miami will be back to being Miami sooner or later. Quick point. Go ahead, go ahead, Phil. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, this is off topic, but you you said something that made me think of it. And I just wanted to say because uh, we've already passed that. Um, the uh, in the Bengals game, did you see Gino, Giovanni Bernard's? Oh my Holy. God! Holy yeah, shit. yeah, yeah, yeah! That was nuts. Yeah. Holy cow! I know, I know, kids saw it obviously, but wow. But anyways, off topic. Continue. All right, so yeah, it was tough. I obviously felt really bummed about it. I, it was a lot of fun, though, to go to the game. I'll never take that away. Even though we lost bad, like, you know, it was still a great experience. And we were competitive that whole first half. And I, I trust this team's mental toughness to put up. 
I will guarantee goddamn T we're not losing by 27 points again the second time. Like, Markeem, if nothing else, it's not I, at home. And look, 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 it depends on how Florida State is the rest of the way. Because, uh, the, like, Jameis Winston said, and this scared the shit out of me when he said this, but in the, pro, in the press conference after the game, he said, this was the biggest game on our schedule. I was like, don't say that, dude. Don't say that. Y'all niggas might be able to play for a national championship. Why would you say something like that out loud, dude? Like, what the... And, uh. and on Jameis, he was very good. But in my opinion, that was clearly the worst game he's played all season. And yes, I know, the worst game you play all season is still like putting 41 offensive points on the board. But I think if you actually watch the game, I think their running back, Freeman, deserved a lot more credit than Jameis yep. did for why yep. they did so well. And I mean, and Jameis did have two interceptions in the first half. Um, and their defense played really well, too. But yeah, I think Jameis was good, but he, like, this is like the RG3 Alfred Morris game against the Giants. Like, you know, Jameis was good. Everyone's going to remember Jameis, but Freeman deserves all the credit. He's the one that really got them to, uh, to do uh, it. Oh, well. you, mean, you mean like Mike Evans, like all season for Shut up. Right now. Shut up. What you talking about? Why oh, okay. you? Johnny, that Johnny football. Don't act like Johnny football isn't amazing. Yeah, but Mike Evans is better. The best player on that damn team. Oh Mike Evans is a beast. But anyways. But anyways. Future Patriot. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to the rest of the season, looking how it's going to go. Hopefully... If, if Jimbo Fisher does what Dim, Jimbo Fisher ju- does, losing a game he's not supposed to, who knows? We'll see. Maybe it'll be Miami Clemson in the, in the ACC championship. Then, then we'll finally get our answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I Although, no. Flor- Florida State but Florida State would have to lose twice for that to happen. Um, yeah, twice, not lose. twice in conference, I believe. They have to lose, oh, yeah, like, yeah. they... So, that, that ain't happening. At, in fact, they only have two ACC games the rest of the year, at Wake Forest and versus Syracuse. So, yeah, that ain't, that ain't happening. That ain't that happening, ain't no. Um, but anyways, it was fun. I had a good time. And, yeah, uh, looking forward to uh, this upcoming week, which we'll talk about later. So, yeah, there you go, Mark. Oh, uh, one, one more quick point. Um, <laughs> with the Giannot, Giovanni Bernard play, I know I'm going back to it. Uh, there was actually top five plays of the week, uh, and there was a catch that was freaking unreal. Uh but who, who caught that? Oh, by uh, the, guy, the Saints player. What was it, Mark? Oh no, Robert Meacham. Robert Meacham. Yeah, I go saw watch that. that I, play. Saw, I saw that go catch too. That. that catch is pretty crazy. Go watch that play. Go All watch right. the top five. It's on my Twitter somewhere. Just next. Down. Now we move on. By the way, FSU hasn't scored less than 40 points in a game all year. I didn't realize that till now. Which is a record for that school. Like, props to Jimbo. He did something that Bobby Bowden didn't do. A round of applause for the guy. He's still in his shadow, but, you know, you get that. Let's you see that if, little thing. Let's see if he can also do what Bobby Bowden didn't do, which is not win a national championship game when you're supposed to. <laughs> we'll see, though. We'll see. Man, enough, enough about uh, those teams. We kind of already – we've gone really long already, but I – I was very happy nonetheless. Now we'll move on to one more topic. We have two main topics before we talk about the games this week. One is the Richie Incognito, Jonathan Martin thing. I have a lot to say, not too much, but I'll let you guys obviously get your opinions out first in the whole situation. For those who do not know, uh, Jonathan Martin left the team to go to a mental facility, and he cited his main reason as bullying by Richie Incognito, his teammate, and he produced a voicemail where Richie Incognito said some really bad things called him a half nigger, said that he would slap his mother and all these things. But like I told Phil before he went on the air, Brian Hartline did in fact say that Jonathan Martin played that voicemail to the whole team and was laughing about it when he played it. So obviously a lot's going on that we don't know about. But anyways, just you guys, your take very quickly on that whole situation. Markeem, I guess you can go first. Um. I, I'm not going to say too much because I don't know everything that's going on. Nobody does. Like, uh, I feel like the reporting in this whole situation has been very shady. But I'll say this. Um, I hate when white guys use the N-word. Let me explain why. Because uh, pe- pe- people say, well, black people say it all the time. And this, this is going to turn into something about the N-word. I'm just warning y'all. But uh, black people say it all the time. Why can't we say it? Um, maybe because you should just know better. Like we were slaves, <laughs> like, you know, like we were slaves. Uh, that was like you guys' word to demean. Like, 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 why would you like to keep that alive by you know saying the n word? I just don't understand that. Like, like, like maybe it's like a throwback to like you know olden times or something. I don't know what the fuck. I think I think it's because that, but I think it's because Markeem, not to interrupt you, but uh, I think it's somewhat some of them justify it by making uh, thinking that uh, 
and Big Red quit Tubman. Uh, I think some of the people think that uh, because some use it, some use it as like a, as a, as a cool thing. I'm trying to get it out. Uh, the hard R. Some people use it with the hard R at the end of the phrase "gur" as opposed to an A, like "guh." And people but, but, think but, that. But you, okay. but no, Phil, you know better though. You just know better. Yeah, I know better. I'm gonna say it. Like, 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 it's impossible for them just not to know any better. Like, I don't right. believe that. But that's all. Yeah, but, yeah, but about the situation, about the situation, I feel like that. Uh, you know, he did. He didn't handle it right. Like, I feel like we should never have known about this. That voicemail should never have came out. Richie Incognito was an idiot because uh, he happened to be like, you know, what he. Remember, you saw he called out Adam Sheffer on yeah. on fucking Twitter, and Sheffer was like, "For real, you want to do this?" So, so you know, you know, I got a voicemail right here of everything you said, motherfucker. Here we go. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> like, you know, you, like you know, he didn't say that, but he was like, "Oh, I don't know what I'm talking about." Well, here's the voicemail that that will show the world that I do know what I'm talking about. Like 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 Stephen A. said on the first take, that is not one dude you want to just mess with because he knows everything about everything because he's around every locker room. So if you say that man don't know something, and he reports it, you you gonna get put on blast as simple as that. And Richie Incognito, who ain't too incognito anymore, <laughs> they, found, they found out that hard. That shit was hilarious. He was like, he ain't very incognito anymore. Found out the hard way. That shit was that shit was the best. And fuck all y'all that say Stephen A. Smith sucks. Y'all y'all suck. But, uh, you know, th- th- that, that's all I pretty much wanted to say. I just think the whole situation was handled wrong. I feel like it's been blown. I, I, I feel like, yes, it was racist shit to say. Bottom line, it was racist. Like, you know, Incognito can say whatever the fuck he want. That, that is racist shit. Like, you know, and, and a dude, but a dude, if it was really upsetting you, you should approach them like a man and said, hey, this, you know, this is lame. Now, Skip, Skip bought up a good point on first take. He was like, uh, he's a young guy. Incognito was like, might arguably the leader of that locker room. So maybe he was just scared to speak up and kind of like deflected everything with humor. You know what I mean? Well, he's, he was like, he was like, so that might just be one thing. And then the young kid just couldn't take it anymore. But dude, you're fucking grown. Like, I'm sorry, though. Like where I'm from, when I was brought up, my mom, my mom always told me, if you got a problem, you need to say something or ain't nobody going to know. So he should have said something. That's right. It's, it's, it's that simple. Like, I feel. I feel like he was a coward about it. Like, and and, and it's coming from a fellow black man. <laughs> you know, he was like, for real, he was a coward about it. Like, if if you Phil, if you said something to me, kid, if you said something to me and I ain't like it, y'all niggas would be the first to know. That's right. Right. Like, he should have. He should have. He should have handled it better. Handle it accordingly, nigga. <laughs> knuckle up. You 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 got mad. He called you a nigga. And then you know, knuckle up. Like, hey man, chill the fuck out. And if you don't want to chill out, beat his ass. Or at least try to. That's an offensive line, man. That dude's kind of big, but <laughs> well, they're both hard, but yeah. But I mean, the, the, Richie Incognito's huge, though. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. All right, Phil. Okay. Uh, one thing I was gonna, one thing I wanted to say, uh, and I did, like I said, with Markeem, he doesn't know, or we don't know the whole situation, so it's you know kind of hearsay. I do think that they're uh, overdoing it. Um, I think that they're. Uh, Oh, not overdoing. What's the word I'm looking for? I, uh, let's just feel like this. I hate to cut y'all feel, but I feel like what Riley Cooper did is worth it. That's just my opinion. Well, that's good. Point. Riley Cooper just walked in some place with a bunch of motherfuckers he didn't know. I beat all these niggas up. I beat I whip all these niggas' ass in here. I'm like, yeah, don't, yeah. Yeah, you an idiot. I, I'm shocked every nigga in there ain't jump on you. That's why I'm shocked. Spot somebody and shoot you. Anyways, um, what was, I would say is, uh, uh, let me let me just say that I was racist, but continue. Yeah, that was very what? racist. What I said? Yes. That's not racist. I'm just saying you. I'm shocked. Shot. You, I'm uh, shocked you getting this shot. What, what you trying to say, Phil? Black I'm people, saying so all black people, people carry guns. No, I'm saying if you walked in and called a bunch of white women <laughs> whores and your boyfriends are there, you get some shot. That's all I'm saying. All right. Anyway, we'll let that go. <laughs> but keep going. Sorry, I, I I will apologize. We're having a racist moment on YouTube. Today. Um. <laughs> Anyways, Phil, is there like good in your closet, huh? Is that what it is? You got yeah, something to say I, to me, boy? Got something? Got, to... Yeah, boy, you're going burn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, oh, that's not good. funny. That's not funny. Yeah, that's not, not funny. funny. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. All right. Um, I'm not racist. Now it's, not, now it's gonna come out. Uh, oh gosh, what was I saying? Oh, uh, me and Big Red talked about this before the show when I kind of just asked him, you know, what was going on with the situation, and I know he's gonna explain it. But 
here's my thing. They're blowing over proportion, but that's ESPN newsflash. If you don't know, ESPN will run with anything. Um, but everybody's been like blowing this. But shit. but news but newsflash. When everybody talks about it, it's a story. That's the bottom line. Um, and it's, and plus it's media guys. So they're gonna blow up anything. So I mean, if you haven't got used to that, yeah, you just don't watch TV. Period. Um, but I'll say this. I'll say just this is just kind of about bullying in general. Um, kind of like Marky was going off just on that word. But you can't. I'm tired of this mentality of that bullying has bullying has come out of nowhere because that's the mentality that some of these people are getting at. Not everybody, but. That bullying is such a problem now when newsflash, bullying has been around since the beginning of time. Uh, bullying will always be around, and you're not going to change that. Now, is suicide rate up? Is this and that up? I don't know. I don't look into that kind of stuff. That's depressing. But, and I'm not saying that you should not act on it or you should not uh, try to fix it. If there's bullying involved, it's not. you should not tolerate it. You should not do this and that. Uh, you should never bully, first of all. And things like that. So, kids, uh, eat, eat your Wheaties and don't bully. Ain't no kids um, listening to us, nigga. <laughs> there might be. Look, we have a kid in the call. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but, uh, no, no, no more stalling. Fuck. Okay, sorry. Dang. Go. Jeez. Oh, Jesus. I'm not even going to get to that. But anyways. So, anyways, uh, my point is bullying. <laughs> it's going to happen. So, it is what it is. But. As far as this situation, I don't know. I don't honestly care. I know that sounds bad, but I don't because it's just like it's just another thing for someone to talk about so they can have an excuse to talk about something else. But it is it is a problem. Um, the thing that kind of got to me when I started saying, OK, I'll pay attention now is and I don't even know if it's true. But uh, Skip, yes, Skip tweeted it. And yes, I follow Skip. But I'm not a Skip hater. Uh, oh, what was I gonna say? oh um, I'm rambling. Sorry. Big rap. The. Uh, what is it? The Dolphins uh, told him to do it. Oh, yeah. I was going to explain that. The, yeah. Apparently, uh, the rumor is okay, that good. a few – I'm not going to explain – I'm not going to like go into my whole segment now, but I'll just very quickly chime in and say that apparently the rumor is that the Dolphins pulled a few good men and called the code red and told Incognito to toughen up Jonathan Martin. And that, my friends, I don't know. It depends on how they did it. Um, like I said, that's, it, that's a big part of it, but – you can't. You got to know that who. You, my biggest thing, like that everyone said, you got to know who he. Uh, Incon- I can't. I'm gonna butcher his name. Incognito, whatever. You got to know his Incognito. Name. Yeah, Incognito. Yeah, I can say it. Incognito. You got to know who the guy is. You got to know who he is, and how and his personality. So if the Dolphins team knows that, and they still went to him and said, "Look, we want you to toughen up a guy," and he knows that there's gonna be. They know Bill Bling is out there. I mean, come on, you're an organization. You should know this. You gotta be smarter than that. So that's my thing, and I, I'll just stop at that. Um. All right. This is not good. On. Let me tell you why this is all Joe Philbin's fault, and why Joe Philbin needs to be fired. <laughs> God damn, man. Dude, dude, you were his biggest supporter. You were his biggest supporter. I remember this. If y'all don't remember this? Go back to the old days. He was a huge Joe Philbin fan. Because I thought Joe Philbin did a lot with a little, but now he's doing a little with a lot. <laughs> um, people don't Joe Philbin is like Greg Schiano not as bad <laughs> go ahead I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But Joe Philbin <laughs> Joe Philbin's personality if you watched Hard Knocks and if you've seen interviews with him he runs a locker room similar to Greg Schiano he's in charge he's the leader no nonsense it's not as harsh as Greg Schiano where an ex-Buccaneers player said the locker room was like living in Cuba. <laughs> and, wow. Yeah, and as a Cuban, wow. and as a Cuban American, um, that speaks volumes. But he, he said, yes, Greg Schiano's locker room is like living in Cuba, which says a lot. Um, but Philman, it's not that bad, but Philman does have a no-nonsense, no-bullshit policy. That's why... He urged Jeff Ireland to trade away Brandon Marshall because Brandon Marshall is known for being a diva. That's why he was he urged Jeff Ireland to trade away Vontae Davis because Vontae Davis, if you saw Hard Knocks, can kind of act like a child. And that's why Chad Johnson probably didn't even have a shot before he got there. Like, yes, they obviously – when Ch- when Johnson did what he did, it was like you got no chance to make this team. But before he even got there, Philbin probably realized, yo, if this guy doesn't get in line, like, you know, I'm kicking him the fuck out. There were three members. Everyone, you guys have heard about the Dolphins Leadership Council, right? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. that it's picked by the players and all that. And the six people on the leadership council this year are Tannehill, Danell Ellerby, uh, Cameron Wake, Mike Pouncey, Paul Soliai, and yes, Richie Incognito. The leadership council last year had three players on it. Most people don't know this. This is why you're getting the true insight from Big Rat 310 over here. Um, the leadership council last year was Jake Long, Reggie Bush, and Carlos Stansby. None of them niggas are there. None anymore. of them are there anymore. <laughs> now, yes, there were legitimate reasons why, although the Dolphins, the Dolphins really, the Dolphins didn't let Jake Long go. They really wanted Long to come back. They just, they weren't going to give him the amount of money that he wanted. And that's fine. They, and, we, and we still put up a fight. Like, we wanted Jake Long to come back. Um, Reggie Bush, we flat out let go because we thought Lamar Miller would be better, which is fine. Dansby, we let go because we thought uh, Donnell Ellerby would be better. And, I mean, that's fine, too. I mean, that, that's a weird one because Donnell Ellerby wasn't – it's not like Donnell Ellerby was on the roster, like as a fourth-round linebacker that we were developing. We went out of our way to cut someone to pick someone else up that we thought would be better. It was strange. But Joe Philbin – Runs the no-nonsense locker room, has a reputation for being a Nazi-like leader, and the three members of the leadership council aren't on the team anymore this year. That's because Joe Philbin did everything he could to deprive this team of leadership. Everybody's always saying, oh, the Dolphins don't have a leader in the locker room. Their leader is Richie Incognito, and that's a problem, and all this and that. They don't have leaders because Philbin doesn't let anyone be leaders. They don't have leaders because the three guys on the leadership council last year are all gone. Those are the three guys that people in the locker room respected, and they're all gone now. Philbin has created an environment where he runs everything. It's a, it's a very strict setup. You do what you're told and all this and that. He, you guys don't, I don't know if you guys know this. Back in August, he was doing a press conference, and they were asking him about all the players on the Dolphins team and all this and that. Someone asked him about Chris Clemens. For those who do not know, Chris Clemens is the Dolphins' free safety who's really fucking good. Like, you know, he's really, really, really talented. And Joe Philbin said, this is an exact quote, I like Chris Clemens a lot. He shuts his mouth and he gets his job done. That, that, that was an exact quote. <laughs> he shuts his wow. mouth and he gets his job done. Like Joe Philbin has created an environment. It's, it's not a coincidence. Look at Joe Philbin. Look at Greg Schiano. This strict, hard-nosed mentality where a leader is considered a threat to your head coach's overall position as in control of everything – that never works. And same shit with the Buccaneers. They have no leaders either because of what Greg Schiano did to them. This is all – a lot of this is on Joe Philbin. This, this, do I blame Joe Philbin for Jonathan Martin going crazy? No. But this, re, this mentality that the Dolphins have no leaders, that's because Philbin made it that way. And he deserves a lot more blame than people are giving him for this situation. As far as the actual Martin Incognito situation, I've said this before. I think Richie Incognito legitimately believe that he and John Martin are good friends. I think it's the type of thing, it's that friend that you're good friends with, but you make fun of him a lot, but you don't think anything of it. You still think you're just really good friends. You don't realize the damage you could be doing to someone else. And then they all of a sudden snap. That's why I say he should have said something. Like, chill the fuck out, dude. That shit ain't cool. That's true. So I gotta say. Like, I don't think Incognito, like, hates Martin and has been bullying him and picking on him. I think he thought he and Martin were good friends. And there's been many pictures the past few days released of those two. They asked Ryan Tannehill his opinion on this. And Tannehill said, I legitimately thought Richie Incognito and Jonathan Martin were best friends. He said that. He said that. I legitimately thought that if you asked John Martin, he would say his best friend is Richie Incognito. He said that. And like I said, Brian Hartline said that, yeah, Jonathan Martin played that voicemail for us in the locker room when it happened. And we, he was laughing. I think Jonathan Martin has been going through a lot lately. He's, try, he's been busting his ass off to be, to be a good left tackle in the NFL. Unfortunately, he wasn't that good. The Dolphins traded for Bryant McKinney, who's been playing very well. And they told Jonathan Martin, okay, now that McKinney's coming in, you've got to move to the right side. They never benched him. That's why I was I was I was confused why everyone was like that's a big transition though man like you got to switch your stance was, and all that stuff he was you got, a, you got pretty much learn a new position what, that no, shit no, is but, not easy he was but he was a right he was the right tackle at Stanford he was just a left oh, tackle okay. in the NFL 
It were, it were. Well, never mind. Yeah, shut up, nigga. Stop complaining. But yeah, so he wasn't get, like everyone saying, "Oh, he was getting benched." That's why he like got all upset. He wasn't getting benched. He was getting moved to the right side. Maybe in his mind, he worked so hard to be a good left tackle, and he didn't accomplish his goal, and that was extremely disheartening. But. Then the lock, the cafeteria incident happened. If you guys have heard about that, that the incident that started all this was Jonathan Martin went to sit down and all the linemen got up and walked away. And like to Jonathan yeah, yeah. Martin, that was just like the last straw. Yeah, Tannehill also said that that prank is so common, they did it to him. They did it to the starting quarterback, the franchise player for this team right now. <laughs> they did it to Ryan Tannehill. He's like, yeah, it happened to me last week. They do it to everybody. But, but, but to be fair, man, like, uh, I'm actually about to defend Martin real quick. Like y'all know he's been going to. through a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like maybe maybe it's not the right time to pick on him. No, that is true. That, yeah. that, that right. is fair. I think Jonathan Martin and everyone knows anyone that knows me, I went on kind of on a rant on Twitter the other day. I have a very severe, close a personal attachment to the concept of mental illness in this country. And I was highly offended at people calling Jonathan Martin a pussy, people saying he wasn't mentally tough. You're not mentally tough. If you want to go out and demean someone for having mental issues, basically admitting that you've never had mental issues of your own, you're a weak fucking human being and you're insecure. And I don't respect you. And anybody that said that about Martin, fuck off. Like it's one thing to say he should have spoken up. He should have defended himself. That's fine. But if you call him a bitch for having a mental issue, then like I said, you're an insecure motherfucker and I don't respect you. And then like honestly. And, and honestly, I'll, I'll, I'll – Go, go, go. I feel good. I feel good. No, I said, I'll jump in on that. I'll say this. It doesn't even matter if you have a mental issue. The dude clearly was getting – was in trouble and I, or getting yelled at or whatever. I mean was clearly being bullied and I'm sorry. It doesn't matter how old you are. Bullying should not be tolerated, period. It should, no, it shouldn't. And he – look, he reacted negatively to that and I get that. But with having all said that, sorry to ramble on in this segment, but I'll just very close it up by saying that I think Jonathan Martin – because he was just going through really he was just in a really he's been in a really bad mood the past few weeks because he has mental health issues and because he was getting demoted and all this and that. I think something that normally didn't bother him that much, like Ricky Richie Incognito bullying him, I really don't think he gave two shits about it. But because he was in a state of mental duress, now for whatever reason it really started to bother him. And he's taking out his anger, his frustrations with his mental health, with his life out on Richie. And I don't think that's fair. I honestly don't think Richie Incognito should be cut. Like, I, I legitimately believe that. Yeah, he said nigger when he's not supposed to say nigger. I get well, it. You, you, you were all by yourself on that. I, I know. I know. I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, 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 to, you know, to quote me, you got to cut that nigger. That's <laughs> you got to cut. <laughs> well, no, you, you just have to. I think, I honestly believe that Richie Incognito was, yes, he, just, he was. Just, just like Riley Cooper ass should have been cut. But I'm just, I'm just saying. Yes, you can't say the word nigger, and I understand that, and I get all this. Richie Incognito, in my opinion, was not a bully. He was a friend. He was a friend of Martin's that just, that just, like, you know, he, he picked on him a lot, and because Martin is in a bad mood of late, it just really started to bother him when he, it he, normally he, he didn't bother him bad time. He picked a bad time to fuck with him. But again, Martin didn't say anything. How was, how was, how was anybody supposed to know? When now part of the reason that Martin probably doesn't didn't say anything is because he doesn't sense a support system or a leadership system that he can run to with his issues. But <laughs> Joe Philbin, Joe Philbin, <laughs> but Richie Incognito, yeah, I get why people are really upset at him. I really do. But I think personally, this is just Jonathan Martin's going through a tough time and he's taking out his anger on Richie. When, because I mean that voicemail happened in April. It's uh, it's November. If you were really that offended by it, wouldn't you have done something about it in April? Not, That's true. Not now, seven months later. Right. Like I personally, I personally think Martin is just going through a tough times, taking out on Richie. Right. I don't think he actually thinks that Richie's a bit of bully. But yeah. Hey, and can I say something on a good note? Go for it. Kind of just to change up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna put the link in the description, or I'll give it a big red. There's a video you all should watch. I'm not going to explain much of it. Just watch it. It's it was a middle amazing. school team. They, it was amazing. They did some, oh, amazing. okay, maybe I've seen it. Yeah. So middle school team, watch it. I'm not going to ruin it for you. Just watch it. It'll be in the description. It'll it's be, great. It'll it's be. great. It's a, it tells you – it just basically just lets you know with all this bullying and stuff we were just talking about, it just kind of lets you know the world's still the world's still a better place or it can be a better place. Yeah. 
No, I, uh, yeah, please send me the link. It's a great link. But okay, yeah, I will. That's a, that's just my thoughts on this whole situation. It's kind of, I just, I think more information should be come out, and I think we need to hear Jonathan Martin's personal statements before we start making rash judgments. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I want to know what he has to say about Richie Incognito. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, like I said, all the the Dolphins locker room thought they were best friends. Thank you know. So yeah. Um. All right, now before we get into the games, we'll talk about what we're, I'm now going to call the college football undefeated teams watch. We got 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 to think of a better name for that shit. We yeah. the name of this show is YouTube Take. We're not exactly <laughs> in depth at making names. <laughs> my nigga, big rap boy. Oh, <laughs> so, anyways, the college football undefeated teams watch begins. We have well five undefeated teams right now that are that are major. Uh, Bama, Florida State, Oregon, Ohio State, and Baylor. Obviously, we're not really going to talk about, like, you know, Northern Illinois and all these people. Like, no one cares. But, anyway. <laughs> that's fucked up. You're right. You are absolutely right. But that's fucked up. <laughs> but, anyways, Northern Illinois is 9-0, and I think Fresno State's also 8-0. But, anyways, um, Bama, Oregon, Florida State, Ohio State, and Baylor. Um, so, Markeem, these five. Uh, who's your favorite right now to go to the national championship game, and who's the most likely to lose the game soon? All right. Uh, Bama is my favorite to go to the national championship game just because of how good I think they are. And uh, Ohio State is most likely to lose because they don't look good. It's just they they, they, they stumble through games, and then in the, at the end of the fourth quarter, they end up scoring a lot. And that's how they end up winning. That's, how, that's why the games look so lopsided. <laughs> Like I, like, I haven't been impressed with them in a while. I think they're good. I do think they're a really talented team. I just think that they have not been challenged yet, and they don't really give a fuck. Yeah, but they have a decent chance they run the table based on their schedule. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It uh, is. But they do, like I said, they do. For those who do not know, Michigan beat Michigan State. So, I mean, Michi- Michigan, State. Michigan State beat Michigan, so they'll have to face Michigan State now. And, and that's a horrible matchup for them. Okay. That's a horrible. Ma- that's a horrible matchup for them. Like I feel like somebody will get them. I have no idea who, but somebody will. Somebody will have their A game while Ohio State has their C game, and they'll lose. Who's the other team that goes to the national title game? Oregon, FSU, or Baylor? Oregon, because I think the well, I just ruined my pick, but I think the Pac-12 champion, which will be Oregon, will play for the national championship. And FSU, Baylor, do they lose this year? Uh. Baylor goes undefeated. I'm pretty sure about that. I, I'm I'm reasonably sure. I feel like a lot of them folks are going to be mad at BCS this year. <laughs> it's a good thing. This is the last year for it because a lot of them folks are going to be mad. But um, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. They usually, usually things work themselves <laughs> out. But, uh, Baylor, to me, is like head over heels, the best team in the Big 12. Like those those dudes, they like I said before the show, they ain't scoring anybody. They will put up forty in in sub zero temperatures with a bunch of snow and ice around it by them. Them motherfuckers, are, they will score on anyone. Like Bryce Petty is on another planet right now in terms of like tempo and getting his team down the field and all that stuff. Like he he's incredible. Um, you know FSU man, like they they're not really challenged that much more this season either, except for Miami again, and we saw it happen the first time. And no Duke Johnson this time. Like, I think this might be the year motherfuckers are mad. <laughs> like, we're, like, really mad. And, and this is this would be one of those years where I can't even defend it. Like, the, the LSU-Bama year, I'm like, y'all didn't watch this season. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? That's how I felt. That's why I was like, because when, like, they talked to Bobby Bowden, Bobby Bowden was like, yeah, they made the right decision pretty much. It was like, how do you say that when Oklahoma State's only got one loss? They actually won that conference and stuff. And Bobby Bowden, Bobby Bowden simply went, come on now. You think they can beat Bama? You think they can beat LSU? <laughs> he said, do you really want to see that happen? <laughs> so I, was like, I was like, exactly. This old man understands. The, he, he gets it. He's been around the sport the, the most. But this is one of them years where, yeah, I think Bama's the best team. But is Baylor really that much worse than Oregon? Is Oregon that much worse than maybe Ohio State if they go to the game, or is Florida State? You know what I mean? It's one of the years where the other three teams are like, so it's really not that big of a drop off. So you're predicting four teams finish undefeated right now? It, it, I'm saying it can happen. I, I, I'm not going to predict that, but I'm saying <laughs> of course, of, and of course it would happen the year before the playoffs. Exactly, exactly. 
<laughs> Next yeah. year we're gonna get literally one undefeated team, and yep. we're gonna have four crappy teams playing. May- just- may- maybe even none. Like maybe it'd be just before one lost teams playing. And Marquee and Marquee will be like, "Yo, welcome." <laughs> but it should be pointed out that this is when crazy shit starts to happen. Because right now, Bama. I mean, right last year at this time, Bama, Kansas State, Oregon, and um, Notre Dame were all undefeated, and everyone was like, "What the fuck are we gonna do?" And then it was made pretty clear. Yeah, and then it worked itself out. So yeah. you never know; crazy shit can happen. Oregon, Oregon could definitely lose this week. FSU could reasonably lose to Miami a second time. Um, <laughs> You're reasonably hoping, yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I think I think we can't predict that game until we see how well Stephen Morris plays because Stephen Morris has been terrible all year. I'll say terrible. And yes, there's excuses. Mm. New, new offensive coordinator. New offensive coordinator. He had the ankle injury. Then he, and he had to play the Florida Gators. Like, you know, just a lot of bad luck, one after another, one after another. But he has not had – maybe he hasn't been terrible, but he has not had one good game all year. Yeah, he's, so, only, some, he's only so, been okay. Some jackass tried to compare. He's like Logan Thomas. I was like, I'm, I'm out of this room. Like, I was, on, <laughs> like, I was, on this, I was in, this, uh, in this chat room on CBS on, the, on one of the forums. This guy was like, he's been Logan Thomas bad. I was like, goodbye, y'all. <laughs> like, I want to do this. I want to do but, this. Like the F- the FSU game was probably his best game, and that was with two interceptions and fourteen points. Well, like, I, I think the Florida game was probably his best game. I mean, yeah, but he didn't look that good. Remember, do you remember how awful the offense looked in the second half? Yeah, that, yeah. They looked yeah. atrocious. Yeah, true that. True it's that. like yeah, like he just he's been he struggled against FAU. Like, which, is, which, is, which is weird to me because last season he was one of the top 10 best quarterbacks in the country. Again, because last season he had Jed Fish as his offensive coordinator, and Jed Fish is now the offensive coordinator for the Jaguars. And he has James Coley, who was the offensive coordinator for EJ Manuel. So, yeah. Um, but anyways, now we move on. Um, that's that with college. Well, I guess we'll find out later on how— Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to say something. And let me also wait. Let me very quickly say— all these teams still have to go through their conference championship games, and that's yeah, never that's that. never going to be easy. Bama, Bama is probably going to win the SEC, but they still have to go through, you know, South Carolina or Missouri. If y'all don't remember, I'm, I'm gonna throw this out here because a lot of motherfuckers don't remember. If y'all don't remember, I believe it was 2003 Oklahoma Sooners. Motherfuckers were saying that was the best team ever, and he lost to Kansas State by 20 points in their conference title game. Wow. But J- Josh Freeman and Darren Sproles led <laughs> Kansas State team, and they lost them by twenty some odd points in their in their conference championship game. Yeah. So anything could happen, and Kansas State like destroyed the BCS that year. Like they completely just wrecked the whole system. <laughs> Everything went haywire. That's why you ended up with uh with LSU and um LSU and 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 USC getting a share of the national championship that year. A little bit of history for y'all right there. Logan Thomas wasn't the quarterback. I mean, Josh Freeman wasn't the quarterback then. Yeah, what? Well, well, who? Whatever. I was gonna say Josh Freeman got drafted like a few years ago. What? What? what whatever. Spent whatever. S- seven years in college. What? what whatever. <laughs> it's whatever. a joke. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It was. It was. It was the quarterback before Josh Freeman. It wasn't that good either. But yeah. Uh, Phil, what did you want to add? Uh, I just want to say who I thought. You, you asked him who he wanted in the championship game, right? Or who he thought? Who? You asked me who I want. Or who I think. No thought. You, you said think. Yeah, I, 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 still, I still think Oregon. I, so I, I'm going to say I still think Florida State. I think Oregon State's undefeated, but I think Florida State gets in. I don't know though. Florida. Because, I, don't I just know think that, man. Like you, you I gotta, just think. Well, who? Well, Oregon. If they play, who, who they play in the Pac-12 championship, will they, they be ranked? They, they play or, UCLA or Arizona State, and they'll State. be ranked. Will or, they be ranked? I, I, well, either one of those two, Arizona State or UCLA. Actually, yeah, don't they play soon? They haven't played yet, right? No, nah, not yet. Oh, yeah, it's in, that's in a few weeks. Okay, so that'll probably decide who wins. Yeah, yeah, the thing. All right. But, yeah, Phil, the thing is that right now FSU is two. But if Oregon beats Stanford on the road this week, Oregon's going to move up to two. And when you look at FSU's competition, how could they jump them? That's what I'm asking. So, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, FSU so guys okay. has, like, two week games, and then they have right. the title game, which is Miami. And, you know, oh, that'd, be, that'd be a good oh, win. God. You mean but, I got to uh, listen? Man, you seriously – college football you're gonna do this to me again seriously 
I gotta listen to the oh the organ can't hang we can hang with anybody. Oh, yeah. But then <laughs> but then, but then I find that hilarious because that's the last nine SEC team to give them motherfuckers a fight. Like like dog, they had to win in the last like minute of the game against Auburn, right? Yeah, Auburn, yeah. Oh my god. Oh I'm not doing this. I'm not doing I'm this not, tonight. Yeah, we're not I'm doing it, but I'm gonna have to do it. I'm gonna have to do it to all these stupid Gamecock fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm calling you out. Stupid Gamecock fan. Well, obviously, if the Gamecocks beat Bama, they should go to the national championship over Oregon because Oregon isn't in the SEC. Done. We would get creamed. We would get smoked by Oregon and Florida State. Oregon or to smoke most people. Like, them right. niggas are unstoppable. Except, except the University of Miami. Shit. It's on, Shit. It's on my record. Hey, it's on my record that Alabama won't lose this year. But, gosh, I hope they do. Actually, I'm going to put on my record. FSU will lose this year. Oh, oh, Larky, you gotta be pr- I gotta say this on the show. You'll be proud of me. My uh, a friend of mine said something about uh, who's a Gamecock fan, and I'm a Gamecock fan. Yes, this is what I have to do. Gamecock fans have to fight. That makes a lot of logical sense. Anyways, I told him. I said he said he said who's one. He's like, you know what? I agree. He's like, the SEC isn't as dominant as people think. Or no, no, I said this. I said SEC is not as dominant as as you guys think, but they are the best conference. And he took a fist to it, even though I just gave them a props and I like, game <laughs> He said, he what, said what, "What more does he want?" He said, "He said they won." Or he said, "Who won the conference five years in a row? Was it five or six? Six, whatever." Actually, I think it's. And seven. I said, and, "And you know what I said to him, Marquise? Which what? this is not right. But I said, I said Alabama, I said Alabama, uh, Florida, and LSU. Yeah, and, pretty like, much. And it's been seven years. He All said, you had to do was say Nick they Saban been in Urban Meyer." Urban Meyer. Yes, that's what I said. And, 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 and less miles, 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 miles and and fucking uh, the guy, uh, Gene Chizik. Gene Chizik. No, 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 no. What you got? Okay, but less miles won with Nick Saban's recruiting class. So what you got to say what? is Nick Saban, Urban Meyer, and Cam Newton. <laughs> I think that describes it best. But yeah. Anyways, uh, Nick Saban got four national championships, and y'all really want to act like the SEC is dominant? Fuck out of here, man. But anyways. Like they- they look like idiots. Like, they don't understand it. Now whatever. we can do my favorite part of the show, picking the college football games. Um, this show has <laughs> significantly this show has significantly made me a bigger college football fan. I always loved the Canes. I always, I always was a diehard Canes fan, but I really didn't give a shit about the rest of the league. Like, go back and watch the first ever YouTube take. Markeem's giving his conference breakdowns, and I'm playing a game on my iPhone. And he's like, kid, what the <laughs> fuck? And I'm like, what? I don't give a shit. I only follow the Hurricanes. And it just amazing. made me so sad. I just wanted to cry. But now, I watch, I will, I've watched more than that, but I, it at least lets me, it makes me want to watch so I can see if Markeem is actually right. And you, you do make us, you've done a good job of educating the masses about college football, and we appreciate that. And we've done it before, but we should give him a round of applause. Woo! Y'all niggas have made me cry, man. I oh, think you. Cry now. But, anyways, um, all right, so first we got Thursday night, two big, big, big games on Thursday night. Huge games. Um, number 10 ranked Oklahoma fighting Baylor in Baylor. And uh, Oregon. On the Oklahoma is ranked 10th? Are you kidding me? Yeah, they're ranked 10th. I did not right? know this. How did I not know this? But anyways, okay, so Oklahoma. Only, only loss they got is that Texas game. Exactly. Oklahoma at <laughs> Baylor. 10 against 6. Huge game. What happens, Marquine? Baylor smokes these niggas mm. by like 21 points. <laughs> We're not- I'm gonna write Baylor by 21. Yeah, they they're going to like outscore them. They're simply Oklahoma does not have enough to stop these dudes. It is that simple. You really think if they gave up 60 something, not 60, was it 60 points? No, it wasn't 60 points. It was uh, it was like it was, it was a lot. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot. I'll look up they right gave, now. They gave up 36. 36. Who am I thinking about 60? Something uh, else. But uh, Maryland, I but, guess. Uh, I yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, but uh, yeah, they gave thirty six points to Texas. What the fuck you think Baylor about to do? I'm just saying, this this, this is gonna be a massacre. Like, I don't think it's gonna be. I, I like Blake. I like Blake Bell. I think I think he will be a good college football quarterback. I think he's every week his arm looks better. And he's a fucking bulldozer, man. He reminds me of Tim Tebow, except not quite there leadership wise yet. But no, they're just better. They're just gonna outscore them. It's gonna be a high-scoring game. Baylor will have more points. It's that simple. Um, Phil, uh, I've, I've also got Baylor. Uh, Baylor scored like what sixty plus in like how many games? Like everyone but one or something like that. Yeah, they scored sixty yeah. points in every game except one. Yeah, 
And I haven't seen them play. I'll, I'll go ahead and say that. But, go- neither have I, but I'm going to this week. But I will see it. Yeah, I will see them this week because I don't even know what the NFL Thursday night game is, to be honest. It's um, uh, Red- Red- Redskins-Vikings. Okay, yeah, I'll be watching the college game. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go with Baylor, and we'll see. I, I, obviously, I joke with Oklahoma. I didn't even know they were ranked 10th because uh, I don't look at the ratings all that often. But. So yeah, that's funny. The main the main reason why I don't watch Baylor games okay. is because if you look at the, I mean Marquine, just look at those games. Look at the teams they face. No, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And they're that's also not on TV. Like, I mean, like, 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 <laughs> like this is the meat and potatoes of Baylor's schedule. Like you know these last few weeks. Like if they if they're gonna go undefeated, they do it now. And I mean like, this is the, this is the weeks when niggas need to start paying attention. But I think they handle Oklahoma easily. I don't even think it's gonna be a problem. I mean, did you have them going undefeated? Did I miss that? Did I have them before the season? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 now, right now, right now. Oh, now, yeah, yeah. I think okay. they'll finish undefeated. And they finished win. Where do you had? Where do you have them ranked? Sorry if I wasn't paying attention. At the oh, end what? of the season, they are yeah. not going to be in the title game because I think they'll just be on the outside looking in. Ahead of Florida State, behind Florida State. Yeah, behind Florida. State. If Florida State runs the table, yeah. I'm telling uh, you, people are going to be claiming. Well, that's why you had a playoff. No, well, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, understandable this season, but you know, yeah. it's not going to happen every year. Really sucks to be an Iowa State fan. Almost beat te- almost beat Texas, and then lose every single game by big big digits. I'll tell you who better miss out, and that's Ohio crap. We don't play nobody state. But anyways, um, I think Baylor's gonna win too. I don't know much about Oklahoma. I do know I picked West Virginia to beat Baylor once, so. <laughs> and I still don't understand why that happened. Because why West did you pick them? Because I heard West Virginia's defense was a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was, I was listening to that show just like dying. I, I had to like rewind it because I was like, why did he do that? But Baylor, <laughs> well, Baylor scored 70 on nobody FCS teams. I, I don't care. Okay. <laughs> like, I don't care. Well, anyways, um, next we move on to the other big game on Thursday. Biggest game of the weekend probably, ex- except for obviously the Bama game. But um, Oregon at Stanford. Markeem on this show last year. Like, close to this week. If it wasn't this week, it was next week. Predicted um, Oregon to have their first loss at home to Stanford. Um, now they're on the road. What's the call? I can't do it this year, man. Like, uh, Stanford, the defense is there. It's always going to be there, man. Um, but they just can't pound the ball like they could last year. They cannot play ball control like they did last year. Oregon's going to get their possessions. You know, and and if you give them their possessions, they're going to score. Like you can stop them for a while, but it's going to happen. I think DeAnthony Thomas, he's making me kind of worry about my pick a little bit because this dumbass decided to open his mouth and say we should score forty on these dudes, no problem. Oh boy, but I want you shut up and be ineffective like you have been for most of the season. Why don't you do that? Why don't you do that, nigga? But, like no, like why do you say that? Like now I'm just like kind of. Now, now, now I'm, part of me is thinking, like, Stanford's is going to, like, beat the shit out of him just for him, just for him saying that. But, no, nah, I just think, I think Oregon's better. Marcus Mariota is on another stratosphere right now in terms of efficiency. This nigga does not have a turnover. Fucking interception. He ain't got a turnover, dog. That's, that's, and we're, we're almost done with the season. If he finished the seasons with, with no turnovers, dog, but he'll throw a pick. Well, would that, would that, pick be one, would that be one of the greatest Seasons ever or no? I, I, I think it's inarguable. It is the greatest season ever. No turnovers, dog. And, does he and, does, does he get taken number one? Does that? I uh, know I'm jumping. No, the no, 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 no. <laughs> Bridgewater is still the best like pro prospect, but you know. Anyways, continue. Sorry, but, uh, but, but it like, should it, be pointed out that Marcus Mariota does have one turnover. It was oh, my a, bad. It was a fumble, but it was just oh, one. Okay. My, my my bad. When is it, this must happened recently? It was against West Virginia, yeah, like two, however soon that was. That was like two weeks ago. Okay, all right, yeah, because I, I hadn't looked in a while. But that is crazy. Like, if you finish this with no picks, that's incredible. And it's, uh, but one fumble, that's it? Like, goddamn, that, that boy, it, 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 it's something else. Like, it's something else right now. He's up here. In my opinion, he's the Heisman front runner because of that alone. Like, that is incredible. But, um, yeah, like, you know, they're just better this year. Stafford can't play ball control enough. Oregon going to get theirs, and it's just going to be too much. It's going to be a great game, though. I'm pretty sure of that. And the Cardinal crowd, they're they going to they gonna show out. They, they always show out. But Oregon got this, I think. Phil? So? Wow. Uh, I've got Oregon because I don't know a whole lot about Sanford. I do like Hogan. Hogan's still there, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mini love. I haven't got to see him this year, I got to see him this year but I got to see him last year. I like him a lot. 
Um, I figured he was still there, but uh, I still got Oregon. Holy cow! This Thursday night, I'm now get excited. I forgot that those games were on, so this is gonna be awesome. I got Oregon though. Um, Marcus Mariota, by the way, Marcus Mariota to me, and I know Marquis is gonna call me crazy, but to me, he's the number one quarterback going into the next year. <laughs> I love Phil, man. <laughs> that was insulting. Where, where do you have him at? Where do you have him at? Maybe, maybe second or third. Like, you know, but okay, yeah. you, you got to think about these guys like as pro prospects. Like you know what? What? Right. Like, and I just don't. I haven't seen enough of Bridgewater to be impressed. Like that. That dude is tall. He has an arm. He's accurate. He's athletic. He the he the intangibles are there. Like, I told you, man, this motherfucker played on one leg and threw for 315 yards. Right. I know. I know. I'm like, you know, it, it, he's just he, he's just way more polished now. Like, you know, I feel like Mar- Mariota's probably second. Him or uh, Hunley, but. Good Lord. So, Good Lord. Hogan what? has only attempted 170 passes. Yeah. Yeah. That's Stanford system. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to pick Oregon as well. I haven't seen Oregon play yet this year. Um, I have seen Stanford, though. And uh, they're. There, grind them out, kick them out, kick their ass, like, you know, run it down their fucking throats mentality. And that's why every time Oregon and Stanford meet up, it's something magical. Like, it's, just, it's just something about them games, man, because it's two totally different things. You had Chip Kelly doing all this crazy shit, and then you had, like, at the time, Jim Harbaugh, like, oh, we just going we just gonna kick it right at these niggas. Like, it ain't, you know, it ain't no thing. Like, that's why I get so excited. Like, I'm so hyped for this game, y'all. Last year, I was, like, on, you know, I, I I was I was so like excited for that game. I think this one will be better. Like I really do, even so, better than that one. We we will see. It'll be fun. I'm gonna pick Oregon. Um, I don't know a whole lot about them, but I saw Stanford play, and I think Oregon. Uh, I think Oregon can score on them based on from what I've heard, based on what I saw them against Brett Hundley. Um, so yeah, I got Oregon in this game for the most part. Uh, now we move on to our next matchup. Arkansas versus Ole Miss. I put this on here for a reason. <laughs> Are we still on this? Is Arkansas? <laughs> is this the week that Arkansas beats a good SEC team? Man, I don't I have no idea. I, like Arkansas is a lot worse than I anticipated. I didn't know it was this bad. Like I, I knew they had talent last year, and I was like, "Well, Bielema can get these guys together." They didn't have as much talent as I initially thought. <laughs> like that. Um, Ole Miss man, what's that guy named uh, Bubba something? Uh, Bubba, Bubba uh, I'm looking the, up the right now. Bubba, Bubba Wallace, that, Bubba Wallace. Yeah, but yeah, Bubba Wallace. That that dude, like those intangibles, man. Like he reminded me of Eli Manning <clears throat> on that last drive against LSU, man. Like he did what needed to be done and got them niggas in field goal range, and bam, that was the game. But um, you know, just like to be able to do that, and he was at home. Granted, like, this is on the road, but uh, man, I don't, I don't know, man. Arkansas, they, they, it's, it's too, it's they're too unknown. Like, cause some some weeks they actually do like they can hang with whoever. Like they were scoring right with A and M. Yeah, I remember that, right? Yeah. And like, yep. and then there's other weeks like the South Carolina game where they look abysmal. I just don't, I don't know what to think. I think Bielema, I think Bielema will have them right soon, but right now they're not quite there yet. So I I, I got to go with Ole Miss. Just you know, I just have to. Phil, uh, I got Ole Miss easily. Hero pick time. Oh, with, you're crazy. With no evidence whatsoever, this is the week that Let's, Arkansas wins. No, oh. <laughs> no evidence. Haven't seen Arkansas play a game yet. I actually have seen Ole Miss play. Um, but yeah, just because I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feel, I, I have a feeling, you know. I got that. And if you don't know, Big Rat's uh, hero picks have been atrocious this year. Oh, really? Because I have just as many as you guys, as far as successful ones. No, I'm talking about the outcome. Yeah, 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 yeah. In yeah. so, college, in college, yeah, college. Yeah, the outcome has not only been the other way, but it's been way. The yeah, the way. West Virginia, Baylor, FSU, Maryland. Maryland, I know. I know. Maryland. Um. Anyways, next we move on to Virginia Tech versus Miami. Uh, Marky, will this be close in your opinion? <sighs> Y'all are gonna win. Let's move the fuck on. Really? That that like depressed over all this, uh, Phil. I, uh, who cares if it's close? Who cares if it's a blowout? We're not winning. We're not fucking winning because we have a guy by the name of Logan Thomas. Even if it looks like we're gonna win, he will play us out of it. It's that simple. <laughs> like we could be up, we could be up, we could be up by fourteen with five minutes left. He's gonna throw some picks. 
Like, like, like he's going to want to have the ball in his hand. You know, he's going to fumble a handoff. He's going to do something that cost us the game because that's what he does. What if it's it? a big game, we're going to lose it because that's what the fuck he does. What is it? Snatching defeat from the uh, – snatching yes, from the jaws of – from the jaws of – snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. That's exactly what he does, kid. Good analogy. <laughs> um, well, Phil, I think you're picking Miami too. Oh, nope. All right, dumbass. <laughs> like, 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 I'm, like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. 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 No, no, let him, let him finish that insult. Please, please, Marquis, please. Go ahead. <laughs> like, like, it's not, it's just not happening. Like, it's, it's, it's just not. Like, no, it's not. I've, seen, I've seen this team all year play extremely well, and then that fool does something, and it's like, what the hell? Like, no, I, I, firm, I firmly think we will play well for most of the game, and then he will do something that will fuck everything up. Um, I'm going to pick Miami, but I do think, because Virginia Tech's defense is very intimidating, that Stephen Morris is going to struggle. Uh, we'll see how well Dallas Crawford plays, but I think the game will be a lot closer than Marquise is giving him credit for. Like, um, like, like Miami, Miami is stingy. Over under on two interceptions for Logan Thomas. I'm gonna say way over. Over. over I'm gonna, over, I'm, gonna over. Say, I'm, I'm gonna say like five. I'm gonna say he's, <laughs> going, he's, oh, he's going to suck this game. <laughs> I'm putting that in your quotes. <laughs> Logan Thomas will throw five interceptions. <laughs> um. That's anyways, awful. uh, next we get, next we get um, uh, Notre Dame at Pittsburgh, the rematch of the famous Notre Dame Pittsburgh game from last year. I'm Arkeem. Does Pittsburgh have a shot here? No. All right, then. Still. It's, it's that simple. <laughs> Notre Dame's is simply better. It's, That's it's, funny. No. Phil? Uh, Man, you're not going to pick Notre Dame anymore. So That's yeah. right. That's, right. That's yeah. part of the yeah, reason why right. I did this. <laughs> well, there's another game. What, who's there? Who are they playing? Pittsburgh. Oh, <laughs> Pittsburgh. <laughs> Pittsburgh. I hate Notre Dame. They, they, they've been kind of shitty this year, too. <laughs> <laughs> this is cruel, but I did it for a reason. God damn it. You just wanted to see if Phil was going to be like, yeah, Pittsburgh. Because <laughs> he'll never pick Notre Dame for the rest of his life. <laughs> oh, my God. They can, all, they can all suck it. Okay, so Pittsburgh, who have they beaten? They've beaten Old Dominion, Virginia, and yeah, they beat Duke. That was an impress- that's an impressive one. Shut the hell up. Shut <laughs> up. Shut <laughs> up. Shut up. Shut up. You wouldn't be beat the Duke basketball team? You wouldn't be saying that had they not come to Lane Stadium and win, which was embarrassing. Embarrassing. Never been more embarrassed to be a Virginia Tech fan than I was that Saturday. Yo, I was so mad. I was like, yo, I walked out the house and I just took a casual stroll down the road. Like, I couldn't, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't watch football at that moment. I just had to go. And you, my- like, I can imagine you walking down the road yelling in your mind, just saying, I hate Logan Thomas. I hate Logan Thomas. I hate Logan Thomas. Like, like I, I, I put in my, I put in my headphones. I have my iPad, I my mean, iPod on, and I'm listening to like something slow, like Jesse Ware. If y'all know, that's an R&B singer. She has a beautiful voice. Look her up. Um, and like the whole time, I'm actually, I'm not singing her lyrics. I'm yelling like, How did he do that? Like, the, <laughs> like, like, how, how could he have been that bad? Ten points? Just like, yeah, just... Snack, I couldn't believe Snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. I love that and, phrase. And, and, me, and meanwhile, the whole time, like, soft R&B is, like, playing in my head. It's just kind of- <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyways, next we go to uh, the biggest game of the weekend, obviously. Um, Alabama, LSU. Uh, this LSU, this game is a lot closer than a lot of people thought. Um, LSU is not as bad as a lot of people thought going into the season. Zach Mettenberger's got a lot better. Cam Cameron has a lot to do with that. Um, terrible head coach for the Miami Dolphins, but he knows offense. He knows how, he knows how to fix. Uh, he knows how to fix some players on offense. I'll give him that. And um, they're playing Alabama. It's in Tuscaloosa. But like like Markeem, I personally believe from my own. I don't need to hear this from Markeem. I've seen. I may have not been the biggest college football fan before the past two years, but I always watch the Bama LSU game. Bama and LSU always play tough, no matter how. No matter like how much better Bama is, and honestly, they're better this year. But I think they're not. They're not as much better this year as they were last year. I think that's fair. Yeah, I would agree with that. And although last year was in LSU, but nonetheless, uh, Markeem, does LSU have a shot? Now, are they going to win? Do they have a shot? A shot, yes. Because this is a rivalry game. Um, 
Matt Berger this year has showed he has balls of steel. That that boy is mentally tough. He's uh he's improved a lot, and not only that, in the biggest moments, he seems to lock in. That's what it seems like this season. So yeah, they got a shot. Are they gonna win? No. No. What do you what's your predicted uh, final score? Or more like how many points, I guess? Uh twenty to seventeen. Solid. Phil? Of course I got Alabama. But uh, I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be typical Alabama LSU game. Um, and Alabama pull it up. So, uh, I got Bama as well. I know Marquis was expecting me to pick LSU because I'm a hater. But <laughs> no, 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 I, no, I just thought because like, you've been talking him up for a while. I was like, no, I, don't, I don't think so. I know, what, I know one of my good friends legitimately feels LSU's winning. But that's just because he's in Oregon. I mean, and, 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 uh, understandable too, though, because uh, – I mean, who who else could do it if not LSU, man? I mean, Auburn on the road. Auburn only because it's on the road. It's in Auburn, but I don't. But I think LSU has a better shot. I think honestly, I think LSU now has a better shot than A and M did earlier in the year when we realized how bad A and M's defense was. Mm, I don't know, man. I didn't realize how bad A and M's defense was. They was, it's it's quite atrocious. But anyways, <clears throat> my whole point. Uh, we'll see. Here's a stat for you. I don't know if you've heard the stat, Marquis. This stat is amazing. In the months of August, September, October, December, and January, in the past five years, Alabama's 31 and 1. In the month of November, since Nick Saban came back, they are 5 and 4. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. All their Not going to matter this year, though. I'm just saying, like, when they lost to Auburn that year with Cam, that was in, that was in November. When they lost to LSU, um, like a few years ago, that was in November. When they lost to AM, not only was it in November, the AM game was this exact weekend last year. Yeah, I know. I know. So you never know. That's why. I mean, the stars just seem to align. Like, you know, it's in November. They generally struggle in November. LSU is a tough competition for them. Um, but I just I wanna I wanna be that guy that goes on the limb and gets the hero pick by picking LSU. But I just honestly haven't seen enough of LSU to be that confident. And Bama, Bama, Bama are Bama have been killing fools. They've been killing bad teams, but they've been killing fools. So I gotta pick Bama here. But would not be surprised if LSU takes this one. Um next we move to the NFL. Um, Phil, did you Phil, did you pick the game? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I picked that one. Okay. Game. Uh, okay. All right, let's move to the NFL. Uh, nothing huge this week. Uh, Phil's team's on a bye. Both of Phil's teams are on buys this week. Woo! I can relax and just enjoy football. <clears throat> um, I'll, very quickly. And, about, and I technically, I'll say all three of my teams because high school football was in the last week for us, so bam. L- and let me say for the Dolphins game, um, as you all know, I'm pretty smart when it comes to the Dolphins. I think we can all agree. My predictions... Not to put myself over, but my predictions this year have been more spot on than they've ever been. Oh, you do, you do. You I I said we'd get I said we'd get blown out by the Saints, and I said we'd beat the Bengals. Bank on it. So, my predictions have been spot on this year. Not to put myself over because I'm so cool and so amazing. But who, who, who do they play this week? You didn't put it up yet. They put. There's a reason this game's not being put up. They make their return to Monday Night Football. Against oh, yeah, against the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the two worst locker rooms yeah, in all of football. Uh, you have got to be kidding me. That's the Monday Night Football has been awful. Let me say that we are going to win this game by 20. But, again, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. Because when we play the Jets in a few weeks in New York, and then the Patriots and then the Steelers on the road, we'll probably lose all three of those games. Hey, hey, hey. The Bucks almost beat Seattle. The Saints. Yeah, that's because Seattle's been... Well, what the- an epic meltdown. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, like, people give, oh, Seattle, that's the mark of a champion. No, no. No. That was that's the same, epic that's the same, meltdown. The, 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 it's the same thing against the Texans did. Not quite the same, but... That was epic, son. That was, like, the worst <laughs> meltdown I've ever seen in my life. That was terrible. But go ahead, kid. I'm sorry. I think that, yeah, the Dolphins are... I know everyone's saying, oh, the Dolphins, like, you know, they're in a bad locker room situation right now. It's a disaster. They're going to lose, like, every game this season. Quite the contrary. I think the Dolphins are pretty... I think the Dolphins are in we-are-ready-to-make-a-fucking-statement mode. And I think the team is motivated to kick ass. And the Buccaneers team has just been terrible. Omar Kelly tweeted, 
this morning. I mean, I already thought we were going to kick the Bucks' ass, but when Omar Kelly tweeted this, it just like brought a big smile to my face. This morning he tweeted, fuck, I just realized I haven't done any research on the Buccaneers game because of this Jonathan Martin thing. And I was just like, god damn it, man, that's funny as shit. And then later today he tweeted, okay, after spending an entire day doing research, I am sure of two things. One, I have no idea how to make what to make of the Jonathan Martin situation. Two, the Dolphins are going to beat the Buccaneers' faces in. Damn. He said, he said, this Dolphins team right now is more motivated than I've ever seen them. The only time that comes close is in late 2011 with Matt Moore's quarterback when we started the season 0-7 and everybody was really shitting on us. And then we won six of nine in a row. Yo, but, yo why I why I didn't keep that dude? Who? Matt Moore? Matt Moore, yeah. He's on the team. Oh, he's the backup. Yeah, he's the backup. Dude, man, we have Ryan Tan. I love Matt Moore, but it's the same thing with Joe Philbin. Matt Moore, Matt Moore is a good quarterback, but he's never going to win you a Super Bowl. Right. When you already know, you should move on. And he's a, <laughs> so yeah. So uh, he said this team is more motivated than it's ever been. We are going to kick their ass this week. I think Mike Lennon is really going to struggle. Brent Grimes and Dimitri Patterson were able to fool Andy Dalton, who's been in the league for three years. I think Mike. I think. Um, I think uh, Mike Lennon is really gonna, really gonna be misdirected a lot in this game. I think the defense is gonna make him throw wherever they want, and he's been playing well. But I think the defense is gonna dictate how he plays. My only concern is Mike James, the running back, former University Phil. If you do not know who that is, that is um, the former University of Miami running back before Duke Johnson. Um, oh, okay. And he's playing well. He's playing really well. Feels um, like I don't give a fuck about you, man. I really don't. <laughs> I was just trying to educate you to make a I humored him. Forbid. I humored him. God forbid. Asshole. But anyways, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're going to kick their ass. But again, it's not going to matter. We'll be 5-4. and four. Everyone will rule. We'll say, oh, the Dolphins are playoff contenders again. And then we'll finish the season 8-8, eight and 7-9. Eight, and nine. Bank on hey, it. Hey, 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 hey. I want you, I'm going to say this right now. I don't want to hear it when y'all beat us. I don't want to hear it. When? You're you already, wow. you already giving up. Did you hear that, Marquise? When you guys beat when? us. Because we're not going to – never mind. I'll get to that. Go ahead. All right. We'll get to that later. Markeem, how would you feel if the Dolphins play the Patriots and Phil picks the Dolphins and I pick the Patriots? No, oh, that would be like bizarre world, man. 2012 is back again. Well, again, okay, we'll get to that game though. But, yeah, next we'll go to the games this week. Markeem, your Eagles are facing your boy. Oh, wait. Yeah, he ain't there, which is why I'm picking the Eagles. Nick Foles, you thought what he did last week was incredible? Wait, wait till Sunday. <laughs> wait till Sunday. Like, he did that to the Raiders. You think he ain't going to be able to do that to the Packers? When, when they don't know if fucking uh, Clay Matthews going to play it in their life? Shit, man. Nick Foles going to go off. I'm telling you. He going to go nuts. It should be known that Markeem does, in fact, hate the Packers defense. So this is It was a fiery passion, so. Okay, well, yeah. I can hate the I- how can you hate a defense that sucks? That's why I hate him. <laughs> well, right. That's true. Remember, Aaron Rodgers. Calls, calls Aaron Rodgers two rings. They stopped anybody remotely. Them niggas win two Super Bowls. They win two more Super Bowls. I really believe that. I really believe they beat the Niners. If they stopped that nigga Kaepernick even a little bit. Even kind of. <laughs> 500 total yards for a goddamn guy his first year starting. Really? In the playoffs? That's terrible. Eli Manning, Eli Manning looking like Tom Brady or Peyton Manning against them. And they had a way better team. Aaron Rodgers on an unreal tear right now. And then y'all niggas can't even, y'all can't even like bother Eli Manning. It's ridiculous. It's just terrible. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, thanks for that. Uh, Son- Seneca Wallace is the quarterback. Aaron Rodgers is out for like five weeks. And, and, Sen- and Seneca Wallace. How many weeks? How many weeks? I- Iowa State's own Seneca Wallace. I think that's all that needs to be said. He's out from four to, for four to six weeks, supposedly, and I think that wow. could be the difference between them not making the playoffs. Honestly, no, that's it. They're they're out. They're out. But I'm, you're, you're, I'm calling it now. Put right. it on the record. Packers I'll put it on the record. The if Seneca Wallace is still your quarterback, I can't say anything about the Talzin guy. But anyways, oh go make your pick now. Uh, my pick is the Eagles. Uh, Packers. The Packers are horrible. Mine uh, as Aaron well. Rogers. Mine as well. But I they will have say, Ed, they, hold on, hold on, hold on. They have Eddie Lacy. But who um, has looked amazing? I'll give him that. Yeah, he has looked amazing. So we'll see. But um, no, 
Eagles are winning this game. Eagles are going to be at five and five and one win away from what Marquise gave, gave them <laughs> um, uh, for the end of the season. But I will say this, um, and I'm going to sound like the biggest fanboy in the world. Um, if if Aaron Rodgers is done for the season, which he practically is, let's just sit him. I mean, might as well, you might as well just sit him at that point. I, I, I think if they're out by the time he's late, if they can win like if they can be like five hundred. Yeah, I mean, I'm not like, say- yeah. Like, like, you know. I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not saying go for Tebow because that's just too much drama. You don't want that. Um, but I do. I am shocked they ain't going for Vince. Like, come on, like that's not going to bring the drama that Tebow brings. So hey, it's like he knows on. the offense, right? And he knows the offense. He was on the team. You got to go for it. Like, come on, like playing Seneca Wallace. You just asking to lose. You just asking to be like, all right, just screw this season then. I mean, Marquise, you must admit the Vince Young and Tim Tebow's in the world. If they have a place. It's this position right now. Where oh, and we, oh, yeah, yeah Vince, Vince Young has a place. You walk away. Like if oh, – god damn. <laughs> <laughs> and, also, and also, I will say this too. Um, and this is – I don't know what's – I can't remember. I always get it wrong how, what season this is for Aaron Rodgers. But for him – and obviously he didn't miss the whole season. But it's kind of – and I'm not saying he's injury prone. Don't get, don't get me started on that. Um, but I will say this, like – Everybody, you know, Brady got hurt. He missed a year. Peyton Manning missed a year. Now Rodgers, not missing a year, obviously, but now Rodgers, now you can't say, well, Rodgers is only didn't get hurt. So, fair enough, fair can't enough. Use that, we'll move, we, can't use that as an argument. Raiders at Giants. I put this on here because it's kind of interesting. The Giants are in, the, are in a weird spot where they could. Oh, stop. Stop right now. Stop I'm, right I'm now. not going to pull a trademark. I'm not going to pull a trademark. I'm not going to pull a trademark. I'm just saying, like I said when they were 0-2, would it surprise anybody if this team won the Super Bowl this year? <laughs> if they win the Super Bowl, I'm done. I'm done. I will watch my Patriots, but that's it. I'm done. If, if they win the Super Bowl, that's just more bullets in my gun right there. Like, it's oh, regular goodness. season. Doesn't mean a goddamn thing. That'd be just, just more bullets right in my gun. If the Giants win the Super Bowl, I will not be an NFL fan except for the Patriots. Oh, but, oh you put, you're right in that order. And here's I'm, what, I'm putting that on your goddamn record. Oh, okay, I got you. Um, Markeem said, no, I, well, yeah, separate page. Okay, but Markeem says his biggest argument about the NFL is because like not, uh, he doesn't think the regular season matters. But I will say this, and I know we're not making this debate. Phil, yeah, Phil kind of cut out there. Phil, can you hear me? Can you I, hear me? I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now finish okay. your point. Uh, instead of all the sports. About uh, major sports, NFL, uh, pro sports. NFL's regular season means more than any of them. Yep. Is that true? No, mm. oh, yeah. It means more you, than the NBA, Markeem. Come on. And yes. I love the NBA. NBA but. and MLB. Mm, no, I don't know about hockey. I, I, I don't know, but the reason why I say that is because in the NBA, if you're an eight seed and you play on one, you're already an inferior team and you, and you don't have home court. Like, in the NFL, you can just seriously be 500 and be hot and then win right. one game. You know what I mean? Like, But I, you play so many games, and it's a series. It's just two different things. So it's hard to compare. But. Like, 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 that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know if you can say that definitively. The, the, Ma- Major League Baseball, y'all might be on to something. But I don't know if but when you can say point, that. Here's my thing. You can point to – playoffs, I get what you're saying. But you can't point to one game in a, in a season. Oh, you, you're oh. saying that you can go back and, like, actually be able to – Determined tell you this of, is the loss that cost okay, you. Okay, all, right, all right, all right. You can't right. say that for the eh, for the enough. NBA. You can say this cost you a seed, but I don't think you true. can. You can say this game cost you a. True, yeah. true, true. I mean that's happened at times, but it's more right. often in the NFL. I get that. Yeah, that's what I was. That's my point. Next, we move on to the Raiders and Giants. So they're an interesting spot. The Raiders had a tough loss last week. They're three and five. The Giants are two and six. Both teams, I don't think anyone really know what knows what to think of them right now. That's why I kind of want to put this game on here. I thought it was kind of interesting. So you want about Eli Manning, but he's been playing better. He hasn't been throwing interceptions, and that goes a long way to winning football games. Um, who, who, who have they played the past few weeks? They played the Vikings and the Matt Barkley-led Eagles. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't give a shit. It's like it, it almost doesn't even count. I mean, I'm going to pick the Raiders, but I don't know how you guys And they're in the NFC East, and I can't believe I'm just saying that again. But, Markeem, so I presume you're picking the Raiders here as well? No, I'm actually picking the Giants, but I think this will be an ugly game. It's an ugly game. This is a game I do not want to watch. Philip? Uh, actually, I'm sorry, I have the Giants. 
unfortunately. Please, Cowboys, don't lose this week. Please don't lose this week. I hate you. And I oh, have no God. In if you. the Cowboys lose and the Giants and win. And the Giants win. The Giants are only two games behind. Oh, my dear baby Jesus. And if I – I'll unfollow trademark. Put that on my record, too. If the Giants win and Cowboys lose, I will unfollow trademark. <laughs> People are like, why, why you like hate that guy? Because he's a damn fanboy. I would be fine if he just said, you know what? You're right. I am. I mean, like I, I did, like cool. I did with the Patriots. Like, you know, fine, cool, like whatever. Right. But don't act like you're not. Like, no, if you are, you are, it's fine. We love you, trademark, but yeah, no. Well, sort of. We love you sometimes. They don't know about love. Love is a little stronger, but. Nah, he's all right. Okay, he's he's, next solid. Game. he's, he's high. actually, got, he's actually high. got a game I'm very interested in. One team <laughs> that looks fucking horrible right now the Ravens. At home against the Bengals, who are coming off a tough loss, I think the loser of this game um, is in trouble. Like I think, I think no matter what, the Bengals will probably win the division. But I don't think if I think if they lose this game, they're 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 headed down a bad slope when it comes to making gains in the postseason this year. Um, the Ravens have looked awful. The Ravens have looked flat out terrible on offense. Joe Flacco, according to Pro Football Focus, is ranked the 33rd overall quarterback in the NFL right now. Highest paid player in the league. Highest paid player, player in the league. NFL. Actually, well, second highest. Uh, well, favorite. second highest, but Aaron Rodgers is the highest. But yeah, second highest paid player in the league. Ah, you got to love it. Oh, yeah. Oh, and me and Phil on our show, I said at least, I don't remember if Phil said it. I said, come the end of the season, people will be saying, man, should we really have given Joe Flacco that contract? Like, I was so confident. Yep. Uh, but the, yep. I mean, if the Bengals hadn't lost the way they did last week, I would pick the Ravens this week. But because they did, I'm gonna have a little more confidence in the Bengals just because the Ravens just look so goddamn terrible lately. Uh, um, you, you want me to go? Or you want to go, Phil? You, you can go. Uh, go ahead. You can go first. Um, I have no other logical reasoning behind this, but I really think the Ravens win this game. I think this is the week. And they just fight for their damn lives. And they put up, they put forth one of their best performances of the season. I think they get this game. I have no other earthly reason why. Geno Atkins is gone for the year, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, he is. A yeah, yeah, that. yeah. So, you know, I mean, that, that's, you know, you know another Ravens. injury. Another injury, by the way. It, it, advantage Ravens, man, you know. I, uh, yeah, I, I got the Ravens. And they at home, you know, got the Ravens. Phil? Uh, I've got the Bengals. They bounced back this week. Um, I just think that this is the week that they, they, they prove why they belong in the playoffs. Of course, I don't still don't believe they're going to do anything. But I think since he wins this game, um, I just don't see Baltimore winning this. Since he's got to win this game. I mean, since he loses this game, I don't want to hear about since he the rest of the year. I don't want to hear about him. I just, I just, again, Markeem, I see your logic. And again, if the Bengals didn't lose last week the way they did, I was totally going to pick the Ravens. But I think the Ravens have to fall to even deeper depths before they pick themselves up. Like RG three was three and six. God, God, God damn! Like <laughs> he's he's like they have to explode on a fire before they pick them that up. that offense is legitimately one of the worst in the NFL. Yeah, well, it might be. Well, no, it's one. Of, I said I said one. I said one. I said one. Because I was about to say might be, and I was like, no, that's the Jaguar. <laughs> Fuck man! Fuck man! The Cleveland Browns look better on offense than these guys do. I also would like to point out that yeah. I've, I'd almost like to point out that I've always been a Jason Campbell fan, and I'm glad that he's getting some love this week. Just saying. He won. Well, one, one thing that has never came out of anyone's mouth ever. I'm a Jason Campbell fan. <laughs> His career quarterback rating is 82. He's actually not that bad. He just yeah. He had one bad season with the Redskins, the same year that their coach got fired. But, you're you're a, you're a fan though, kid. You're a fan of Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah fans. I, like I like him. He's been. Oh, can you deny how he's been doing? He played well against the Chiefs. Yeah, he's been. He's been cool. He's been cool. The Ravens' defense is still legit. Their offense sucks, Dick, but their defense is still legit. But anyways, um, next we move on to uh, Lions at Bears. Oh the, God. Hey, Josh. Lions and Bears are my. <laughs> the Josh McCown led Bears. Looked hell of impressive on Monday. Mark Tressman is a is a god amongst men. Josh McCown looked like a Pro Bowl NFL quarterback in that game. And I know Josh McCown is not that good, but Mark Tressman has transformed him into a into a capable quarterback. Um, I don't care if the Lions are coming off the bye and they look great. I'm buying the Bears this week. They're on. They're at home. Mark Tressman is a much. 
Mark Trussman is a much better coach than Jim Swartz, in my opinion. Uh, I'm buying the Bears this week. Well, that ain't hard. That's because Jay Cutler sucks. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, he does. He fucking does. That's what I've been saying for years. That's why Josh McCown looks great. But everybody's like, Jay Cutler sucks. everybody's like, you're not being objective. You just don't like. No, this my, it's always something with this nigga. Like, whenever he looks good, he randomly looks shitty or he gets hurt, which is what he did this year. And then people are like, well, you just so you just don't like Jay Cutler. No, nigga, my, I have evidence. <laughs> how many how many times are the Bears gonna be a legit contender and then Jay Cutler goes down? How many times is that gonna happen? I think this I think this has been one of the most overrated franchises in, in the past like ten years. And eventually, and I'm not saying it's Josh McCowns who's the guy like, that, like no, do this, like, what? but no, eventually it's gonna eventually a star is gonna come in and the Bears are gonna be like, are, is he better than Jay Cutler? Like, like, no, every year motherfuckers at, like, the best. Like, oh, man, that, what, last year everybody was picking them niggas to go to the Super Bowl and shit. Like, <laughs> Me. Where, where is this shit coming from? Like, no, like, they have, legit when they, they play good. They, they went to the Super Bowl one time. Any other time they've, like, lost quick in the playoffs. But that's because, Mark, but this year's different with Trustman. And many people said – Chris yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of hearing this year is different. Like, for real, I'm yeah. sick of hearing that with the no, Bears. No, 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 no. It's different because they no, actually have – No. It's different because they actually have a different coach. Yeah, that's And true. Mark that's true. and Chris Wessling – Chris Wessling – Bobby Smith is, a, is the epitome of mediocrity. Whoa. I wouldn't say that, but Chris Wessling – Chris Wessling on NFL Around the League said – at the beginning of the season, I've never liked Jake Cutler. I've always thought he's one of the most overrated quarterbacks in the NFL. But goddamn, does he look so much better under Mark Trussman? One of, but <laughs> no, he's one of Mike Vick. Mike Vick, shut up, shut up. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, well not not so much these days, but for his career, yes, Mike Vick. But um, um what's your pick, either of you? I, I can't pick the Lions, so oh. I have to pick the Bears. <laughs> But I forgot about e- e- that. Either way, these are two teams that I don't trust at all. The next time they play each other, I would like to be excused from the pick. Like, can I do that? <laughs> uh, Phil? Um, Marquise is not going to like what I got to say. The Lions is going to win. Um, obviously, I know you can't pick the Lions, but the Lions are going to win. And uh, I think the Lions are very on their way to make the playoffs. Well, no, defense- no, well, no shit, no Aaron <laughs> Rodgers, of course. <laughs> oh, that's what you're going to come on. Lions are going to make the playoffs without it, with Aaron Rodgers still playing. I, 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 I'm, I'm not so sure. I'm not so um, sure. Well, we can't say that now because we won't know. But uh, I'm just going to say that the Lions might make I'm, – I'm not going to go on the record yet, but I will say this. Their defense isn't going to do anything once it comes to playoff time. But uh, I do think they're going to make the playoffs. But anyways, Lions win the game. That's all you need to know. Uh, I got the Bears. And Marquis, just remember, this is the Josh McCown-led Bears now. This ain't Jay Cutler. I, 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 I know, I know. A lot of my, a lot of my criticism was towards Cutler, but I think that that goes for the Bears too, man. Like in general. Well, but legitimately, you have reason to believe this year's different. They have a completely yeah, different quarterback, different coach. That is true. And a coach who's a complete 180 from the previous coach. This defense is legitimately terrible. And, and I was the one that told everyone, well, not everyone, but a lot of people said, I was like, Tressman's gonna come in and Cutler's gonna play better, but I still don't trust these niggas. <laughs> but let me say their offense but Matt Forte has been looking amazing and Brandon Marshall and Alshon Jeffrey may very well be the best wide receiver combo in the NFL right now besides the Broncos like, Alshon Jeffrey he looks amazing this year do you know what t- uh, what calls he and, go to and, and, that's a, and that's something me and Phil told everyone that yes, through to the next level can play because he's tall he's big and he has hands there you go you're welcome um, so, anyways, uh, but yeah, Josh McCown is this offense. Is, I don't know. I, I really enjoy watching this offense. <laughs> yeah, off topic, but I got, I got a question to ask. Typical ROH fan is the spinner net of Twitter. Why do people talk to him? I don't even know who that is. Who is that? Hey, he's, uh, he's uh, a good kid. He's, he's, he's uh, I'm afraid. I thought he, uh, we're friends on Twitter. He's, he's, he's really, he's really cool. I've, I've met him in person before. He, he has a funny account. He, he trolls a lot, but he's good. He's yeah, a good guy. Yeah. Uh, I got the Bears as well. Um, Next we got, I mean, actually, no, not the Bears. I, I guess. I mean, and, and, and that's not a shot at you, typical RH fan. Like, I might know who you are. I just, you know, escaped my mind. But go ahead. Anyways, um, next we got Panthers at 49ers. The best NFL game this week, in my opinion. Uh, Mario Manningham is back. He'll play this week, I believe. Crabtree is, has returned to practice, but he's not playing this week. Um, 
It's in Candlestick. The Panthers have been looking amazing lately. Phil, what are your thoughts on this one? Oh, gosh. Here comes where I come. I was a hater. Hey, Panthers. Congratulations. You're not going to face competition. Um, not saying I'm not going to knock the Panthers, but look, guys, they've been knocking teams in their teeth. Yes, I, and that's what I give credit for. I said it this uh, past Sunday. They play, they're play. they playing teams that aren't going to be in contention for anything, but they're creaming them. So it's not close. So I get. So I, I got to get props to the Panthers there. Their defensive line is legit. I will see them live in person next week as I see the Patriots. But anyways, um, we'll get to that. But uh, I just have to say that the, uh, the this is competition, so we're going to see if Carolina is, is, is legit to me. Uh, at least can hang with them. So if Carolina can hang with them, we'll see, that's all that I need uh, as far as proof to if they can make the playoffs. So I got, but I got San Fran winning this game. I don't think I just don't think Carolina's defense is going to be able to with with Kaepernick getting his weapons back and all that. I just I, I'm going with San Fran, and they're getting better. San Fran started rough, but they're getting better every game. Add Manningham, add Crabtree, and lights out. You want to go, kid, or you want me to go? Uh, I think I I like Carolina a lot. I respect them as one of the best teams in the NFL, not F N S C NFL. They've looked amazing lately. Ron Rivera's completely changed his mentality when it comes to selling for field goals and going forward on fourth down. But I think they'll lose this game close, though. I think they they've been playing really well. I just think now's like when they kind of hit a snag in the road. And then they'll adjust. They'll get better, and they'll get better as the season goes. But I just think this is the week that they thought that like their good their winning streak comes to an end for a bit. That's just my opinion. This is this defense, this Panthers D, is what niggas think the 49ers D is. Oh, yeah. I got the Panthers. I think oh. that this defense is smothering. I think Star alluded to Lay, as I told every fucking body, this is the best defensive player. And I said that in the middle of the goddamn college football season last year, and everyone was like, who the hell is that? I was like, this is the best defensive player in this draft. Who is that guy? I ain't never seen him before. Um, you know, I, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I'm going to toot it a little bit. I'm kind of a fucking genius. Anyway, this is going to be low score and this is going to be ugly. And I got the Panthers. I think they just got enough to mess with the Niners. And I think the Niners secondary is extremely overrated. And I think Nick Cam will be able to Exploit them niggas just a little bit. You know what I mean? We'll I, got, I, got, oh. I, got, I got the Panthers. Also, I will say, also, I want to add that uh, uh, to my defense, or to, not to my defense, to the defense of the Panthers, the Niners ain't played nobody recently either. So, uh, but I just still have the Niners. But. Hey, that is true. Um, Jacksonville, right. Tennessee, Arizona, and Houston. Enough said. Oh, wow. Actually, I, I didn't know it was that bad. Uh, Carolina's, and I'll go ahead and shout that out, so, 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 just in case somebody wants to know. Atlanta, so said, Tampa Bay, St. Louis, Minnesota, Arizona, New York, Buffalo, and Seattle. That's their whole schedule that they've played so far. Now they play San Fran, New England, Miami, then they get Tampa Bay, then they get New Orleans, uh, the Jets, and, and the Saints. It's time to see if Carolina's legit, and I can't wait. That's that. That was actually some great analysis you gave there, legitimately. The way you phrased it. I don't. Your when, pacing, when I say right, when I say they sound like Jim Rome, except without <laughs> the ignorance. Good job. <laughs> when when I say the scheduling thing, people always get even big rat sometimes. Not to knock you, but people get people think that I'm t- nitpicking. I'm not nitpicking. Look, you have to put in the schedule just because the team, you know, <laughs> turn into pan- Woody Page. Look at the schedule. schedule. <laughs> It's not just the schedule. You can't be blinded by the schedule. Fair enough. You have to look at the schedule. Fair enough. Fair enough. Because there are people out there, it gets me frustrated because there are people out there that, that think that a team is so good when they have not played anybody. You, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, you mean you yelled you, at it the heavens about Boise State for years. <laughs> it's called me stupid. That's when, I, that's, when I had no, that's when I had no clue what I was doing. You, 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 mean, you, mean, you mean like when the, the Patriots schedule the first few weeks of the season? All right, move, moving on, <laughs> moving on, moving on. <laughs> Uh, I know. Oh. I, you're right. Wait, wait. Right. And then, and then right. they, and then they played tough teams, and they went 500. And one of those games they should have lost. All right, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> should have lost. Should have lost. What are you talking about? That's that's the one we, and one we should have won. And one we should have won. The Jets. Oh, Arguably, 
You can say what you said. I can say what I said. Okay. Can we move on, please? Can we <laughs> Texans, we at, Texans at Cardinals. I'll go last on this one since I'm the tech resident Texans fan of the group. Markeem, your boy Case Keenum. I, I'm going to go with him again, man. Yo, he's, he, yo Kubiak's going to be able to coach this game, right? They released him from the hospital. Is he fine? Uh, uh, no, I, I don't think so. No, wait, I think no, he's still there. Wait, Phil, wait, no, wait coaching no. this week. But I, I know, yeah. I know he's out the hospital. He's not. Yeah, but Wade, Wade Phillips has already been announced as an interim coach. Oh, oh, okay, so, all right. Well, uh, so good luck Texans. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I, I don't think it's gonna matter, man. I think the Case Keenum gonna go out there and ball, man. He'll go out there and ball. He's been balling against everybody, man. I can't believe I'm about. I can't believe I said that about Case Keenum. But yeah, Keenum Feenum. The Keenum Feenum. He, he gonna he gonna go out there and ball, man. Like he he looks, <laughs> he looks like a quarterback, man. He really does. Like, he used to like Tim Lincecum. Now he looks like a real quarterback. Tim looks like a wow, great record. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy, man. Yeah, I, I got the Texas. It should be a good game, though. I got the Texas, too. Um, not Carson Palmer is on enough set. I got the Texans as well, actually. I think it's time for them to win. I think the Cardinals, they're 500, but Lord knows. they. As far as finding a way to look so unimpressive in victory, I mean, they, 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 they've done that. So, although much respect to Bruce Arians, but yeah, I got, I got the uh, – which one will call it? I got the uh, Texans here as well. Next, we got the Broncos on the road against the San Diego Chargers. Peyton Manning and Phillip Rivers were both named the um, – they were both named to the uh, pro football focus all-pro team of the mid-year. Peyton Manning obviously getting the starter. And the backup was not Aaron Rodgers. It wasn't Phillip Rivers. It wasn't Brady, obviously. It was uh, Phillip Rivers. And it's in San Diego. So, Phil, does the upset happen this week? Uh, first of all, I want to establish something because I just looked at it. Um, the two best teams in the AFC are on bye this week. <laughs> that was still totally biased. Wow. Totally biased. I'm kidding. Two of the best. Sorry. Wait till I'm they get their sure. asses handed to them by Carolina and the Broncos back to back. All right. No, because their biggest fan in the world will be there live in action, getting to show, see Tom Brady throw touchdown after touchdown on Cam and on you, Josh. You Morgan. mean you mean against that Carolina defense that's built very much like the Cincinnati Bengals defense that wrecked you guys when you guys played them? Okay, have fun. You mean that. you mean oh yeah, that defense that has Josh Norman who uh, went to coach the Carolina? Anyways, I can't knock that defense. All right, All right um, make your goddamn pick. <laughs> Fuck. Sorry. Uh, I guess I can't say hero pick here because it's too close of a matchup. But I'm going with San Diego. Yeah. No, so, I, I, I think I th- unless Marquine picks them or if I pick them, I think that could qualify as a hero pick. Okay, well, what's up to y'all? Anyways, I've got San Diego in this game. It's in San Diego. I like San Diego how they're playing right now. I don't like Denver's defense. I do give Denver props because they got rid of their, to me, their biggest problem. And, and no props to him. I mean, it's not his fault. Um, John Fox is gone. Uh, right now, so wow, there's some props for John Fox being messed up. God no, damn. no, 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 props, <laughs> not props. Like that was the wrong word to say. I'm saying uh, get well, soon. get well soon, get John well, Fox. Get, you suck. Get well soon, John. <laughs> I'm just saying. That last year, amazing. last year, Denver, <laughs> last year, Denver would be in the AFC Championship game. Anyways, um, I'm still thinking about that. Fake man, he got screwed by John Fox. He anyway, did. He did. So, so John Fox. Have your fun. Um, I mean, get better. Sorry. And it, <laughs> it's not me. Wow. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, Denver. Sorry, you're gonna lose to San Diego. And sorry, Denver. I mean, sorry, Kansas City. You're not gonna be the team to knock off Denver. Um, well, I'm bad. That was already your boys, Andrew Luck. So anyway, but Kansas City, you're not gonna be able to prove. Ah, whatever. We'll get to that later. Anyways, I got San Diego winning this game. It's at home. I th- I don't think Denver sweeps San Diego. I think I got I've got San Diego winning their home game against Denver. 